Wyatt, Bears of Burden, Book Two. Written by Candace Ayers. Narrated by R.J. Crichton. Chapter One, Georgia. I tapped the screen of my phone and groaned. One bar. I have one measly, stinking bar of service. Is this just a dead zone or something? It gets better once you get to town, surely. The cowboy next to me driving grinned. No, ma'am. Not really. I held the phone up, like being lifted higher than the car's open top would suddenly make a difference. Shit. I'm trying to send an email and nothing's happening. He looked over at me, pushing his cowboy hat up on his head while holding my gaze. The road stretched on, straight as an arrow, in front of us, and he held the car steady. We could always find something better to do. If I hadn't been dating bad boys since I was old enough to shave my legs, I suppose I would have appreciated the dangerous move. As it was, the cockiness of it only served to irk me slightly. Somehow, the possibility of ending up splattered on the front of a big rig, like the few that had passed us, just didn't appeal to me now that I was in my late twenties. Not that it had in my early twenties, either. Keep your eyes on the road, and I'll consider finding something for you to do. Lie. Nothing was going to happen with a cocky cowboy. He'd already blown his shot. I couldn't even pinpoint when exactly it had happened, but one moment I'd been considering him, the next I'd already written him off. That was just the way it worked for me. My email finally went through a half a second before a message from my latest ex popped up. I didn't bother to read it before pressing delete, then quickly dialing my best friend. Allie sure knew how to hide when she decided to run away. The town I was headed to was barely a hole in the wall. It didn't matter enough to get its own spot on a map, apparently. Hence the cowboy driver in a convertible instead of a real taxi service. It was the best arrangement I could find to take me all the way down to Burden, Texas. Allie answered on the fourth ring, kind of out of breath. Knock it off, I want to get this. I rolled my eyes as a low growl sounded from her end of the call, and she burst into giggles. I knew what was happening. She'd been attached to her new man's hip since they'd hooked up, and this wasn't the first call I'd made interrupting them. Allie, I'm about an hour away. You think you two can be done by then? I couldn't even pretend to be annoyed at her for answering in the middle of playtime with her big bear man. She was in love, and I was happy for her. She deserved it. She'll be done and working the bar by then. Can't wait to meet you, Georgia. Bye now. Click. I laughed and slipped my phone back in my purse, content to ride the rest of the way without it. I had hastily wrapped a silk scarf around my hair to keep it from beating me to death on the trip, but it wasn't doing much. Long strands were whipping around, lashing my face and neck. I glanced over at the cowboy and noticed that his hair just seemed to blow easily around his forehead. Sexy. Maybe I'd written him off too soon, I thought, as I mentally put him back on the court. Maybe he was still in the game. I was tired, both from the flight I'd taken and the going-away party I'd thrown the night before but I refused to give in to the urge to sleep. I'd be seeing Allie very soon for the first time in what felt like forever. I didn't want to meet her new man with sleep marks on my face. If there was one thing my very southern, very bellish mom had taught me, it was that first impressions mattered. How long are you going to be in town? Maybe you can look me up on your way back through. He side-glanced over at me through hooded lids, his lip caught between his teeth, and I had the distinct impression that he'd practiced that look in the mirror several times before perfecting it. I'm not sure, actually. 
could be a few weeks or a few days. It depends on how Bird in Texas agrees with me. I can't imagine anything or anyone not agreeing with you, sweetheart. I stared at him for longer than it was comfortable for him, evidently, because he turned back to the road, eyes straight ahead and steady for once. I couldn't help picking him apart. It was just a thing I did. It was the reason no man lasted longer than a few weeks with me. I stared too much, had silent debates about them in my head, and just generally analyzed them to pieces until they, or I, ended it. Usually me. I seemed to always be looking for something that wasn't there. Hell, I didn't even know what it was that I was looking for. Lots of people disagree with me, sweetheart. I threw the name back at him. How much longer till Burden? He glanced back over at me in time to catch the wink I sent his way. I didn't want to seem like too much of a bitch. He could still pull the car over and kick me out, even if I was paying him a hefty sum to drive me. Still a good ways off. Why don't you lean on back and get comfortable? I'll get you there safe and sound. I let out a long, audible sigh. Without my phone, I was as bored as a puppy in a fenced yard without toys. Okay, just be sure to wake me in time to freshen up before we get to town. Maybe we can stop at a gas station or something before we get in. He laughed like I'd made a funny joke. You must be thinking of someplace else. There's nothing outside of Burden but more of what you're seeing right here. I looked around. There's nothing between us and the town except... Land? Not a thing. The first place we'll come up on is a bar called The Cave. I guess you can freshen up in there if you want. I bit off a groan and tipped my head back to look up at the sky, looking at the vast, bright blueness of it. I could almost forget that Allie had clearly found a town that was meant to be hidden away. It was tucked away with nothing around it and hardly any way to get there like a private oasis residents weren't keen on sharing. Just wake me up when you pass the town sign. I assume there's one of those, right? He laughed. Of course. Unless someone got drunk and ripped down again. I couldn't help but laugh. Bird in Texas was going to be quite the adventure for this city gal. Chapter 2 Wyatt Coming down from the mountain always made my bear restless. Leaving the wilderness to return to a more tamed life made us both a little uncomfortable. Things were better in the wild. As a man or a bear, I could run and swim and do whatever I wanted without any hassles. There were no rules. I'd always found there were too many rules in town. No shoes, no service, no shirt, no service, no pants, you're suddenly a criminal. Hell, I couldn't even walk barefoot into my mom's house without her yelling about it. It wasn't entirely my fault that I was more bare than man. Being raised at the base of a mountain and given free reign, I'd always done what I wanted. It wasn't until I was old enough to begin considering females that mom started the lecturing. She'd raised me to be the way I was, but she was the first to say I needed to act normal. She wanted a daughter-in-law and cubs to fawn over, neither of which would happen if I didn't start showering inside and wearing shirts with buttons, she said. I focused on the small group of people following me down and gave them each a reassuring nod. I'd known they wouldn't survive well in the wild. They were too soft. They'd given it a good try, though, and I respected them for that. They didn't all look rough around the edges, having just faced a bit of what Mother Nature and her unyielding terrain could dish out. This group hadn't had an easy time. I've had groups that surprised me, and groups that left me wondering why the hell I continued to do what I did. Teaching humans to survive in the woods wasn't exactly a cakewalk. They didn't come with the proper instincts— and most weren't able to last out here. 
This group had fought, though, and that was impressive in itself. Wyatt, are we almost there? I don't think I can make it another step. I looked at the younger woman named Sarah. She was pretty, and I'd noticed her giving me more than a few steamy glances. I knew the trail we were on well. After the rock formation we'd just passed, there was still another half an hour before we reached the bottom. We're almost there. If you think you can't make it, I can carry you. She gave me a coy smile. I don't think I can make it. Another job perk. Women sometimes came along on the trip, and sometimes I had to play hero and save them. Those same women seemed more than eager to throw their numbers at a man who'd rescued them, and I didn't see any harm in having a little fun with them. I was healthy and single. I bent over and easily lifted her in a fireman's carry. She was soft and smelled like flowers, despite having been outside, in the heat, all week long. As an unmated bear, I chose to enjoy most of the women who came on to me after these trips. I never mixed business with pleasure, so during the trip it was strictly yes ma'am and no ma'am. But afterwards, we were all free to do whatever and whomever we wanted. Sarah's not-so-subtle come-ons told me she'd be perfect for a little harmless fun. She'd at least help take the edge off. I had been wound tighter than usual, since my best friend, Thorn, had bonded with his mate. Seeing Thorn and Allie together, I couldn't help but feel like I was missing out on something amazing. I wanted what Thorn had stumbled into. Everyone did. Prospects were few and far between for a guy who spent over half his life in the woods, though. I would just have to settle for quick hookups with women like Sarah. Both of us would get happy, and then we'd go our separate ways. That was how it worked. I bit back a sigh. Lately, it felt more and more like work. I glanced back at my group and frowned. I wasn't sure I'd helped any of them. I led them the rest of the way down to their cars and watched them all leave. Sarah had made up some excuse about organizing her car so she could stay behind. And it didn't take any time at all for us to put my office to use. She was frisky, leaving bite marks and scratches that I hadn't planned on and didn't want. I tried to drive out that persistent itch that I couldn't get rid of through her. But when it was done, and I was buckling my pants and helping her up from my desk... It was still there. The hair on the back of my neck was even standing on end, and my bear was more on edge than ever. Sarah left her number on my desk and a lipstick kiss on my neck as she left. She winked and told me she'd see me soon, but I was so damn distracted by whatever it was that had my bear freaking out that I'm not even sure I told her goodbye. As soon as Sarah left, I went out behind my office and shifted. I let my bear take over, leading me to whatever had it so worked up. I edged my way through the woods that surrounded the town and took my time scenting out everything. It didn't make any sense. I couldn't smell anything odd. No one had been there or who didn't belong. There was nothing that should have been alarming my bear and sending me into such a tailspin. By the time I hit the back door of the cave, Thorn's Bar... I was so restless my bear couldn't maintain control. He gave a mighty roar that turned into a shout as I shifted back to myself. Thorn came out a second later, glaring. You trying to give my mate a heart attack? Why are you back here screaming and roaring like someone just cut your damn nuts off? I shuddered. Do you not feel that? He frowned at me and shook his head. Feel what? There's something in the air. My bear is about to claw my insides to shreds. He tipped his head back and took in a big breath. Halfway through, he choked and then laughed. Wyatt, you smell like you just fucked a flower. Is that what I'm supposed to be smelling? I could have done without that, thank you very much. Go take a damn shower. I nodded, telling myself that it would help. Sure, sure, I'll see you later tonight. He shook his head and waved me off.
Get it together, man. We've got a game later. I headed towards the river and tried my best to calm my bear down. It wouldn't do any good if I shifted in the middle of the game and mauled someone because I couldn't remain in control of my bear. Chapter 3 Georgia How do I look? I turned to face the cowboy and did a little spin. I'd woken up a few miles before the burden sign and touched up my makeup. I'd even hopped in the back and changed from my casual traveling attire to a pretty white sundress, while sexy cowboy kept his eyes on the road. Or so he swore. Delicious. Let me buy you a drink inside. I was standing next to his car outside the cave, eager to reunite with Allie. I didn't have time for a drink with the guy, but I didn't want to be rude either. I pulled the scarf from around my head and gave my hair a toss with my fingers. Sorry, cowboy. You've got to get back to the city, and I've got a meeting with my bestie inside. He frowned and gave a slight eye roll. Not interested, huh? I walked around the car and leaned down so I could press a kiss against his cheek. Thank you for the ride. I put an extra couple of twenties in the envelope for you. Maybe I'll see you around. His eyes were down my low-cut dress when I pulled back. You've got my number, he winked. Don't be shy about using it. I patted the door of his car and grinned. That's one thing I've never been called. See you around, cowboy. I grabbed my bags and headed inside. From what I could see of the town and bar, they were both laden with a rustic flavor characteristic of the Old West. With wide front porches and buildings that looked like they were from the days of stagecoaches and showdowns at high noon, it wasn't hard to see why Allie had been so drawn to the place. It had charm, and no one could deny that. I held my phone in my hand and looked down at it as I pushed inside the bar. Charm, but terrible cell reception. I was just sliding my phone back into my purse when a jarring collision sent me sprawling backwards on my ass. I looked up, ready to spit nails, when I realized I was looking into the face of my best friend. Wow, she looked good. Allie was wiping spilled beer from the smell of it off her chest with a scowl. Just as she looked up to toss out a snide comment, her eyes widened and she screamed. Georgia! Allie dropped to her knees in front of me and smashed me against her chest. I was so distracted waiting for you to get here, I wasn't watching where I was going. Are you okay? I pushed her away gently and looked down at my white dress. I was? You're lucky I love you so much. I just changed into this to show off for you and make a good impression on the man of your dreams. And look how you repay me. She laughs and tugged a piece of my hair. You look great. A sight for sore eyes. I looked her over and noticed the subtle changes. Her skin glowed bright with happiness, and I could see the edges of the bite mark she'd told me about. The one that let the shifter world around here know that she was thorns. Holy shit, Allie, you look amazing. I thought you were a little cuckoo to move out to the middle of nowhere, but obviously this place agrees with you. She pulled me up and gave me a proper hug. When she released me, I noticed a huge hulk of a man coming our way. His eyebrows were furrowed like he was worried about something. I heard you scream. You okay? Allie gazed up at him with a look of what had to be true love in her eyes. I wasn't sure. I'd never really seen it before, but it sure looked good on her. She stretched up and kissed the man before turning to me. This is Thorn. Thorn, this is Georgia. I smiled up at the man, feeling ridiculously small. I stretched as much as I could, trying to feel a little less vertically challenged. Nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. He grinned and wrapped his arm around Allie. All good, I'm sure. Sure. All good. I laughed when Allie swatted me. This is a really nice place. We do all right. He kissed Allie and then nodded towards the back. I've got to finish up some work, ladies. 
Anything you want or need is on the house, Georgia. There's a football game tonight, too, if you want to stick around the bar. It's held in the field out back. We both watched him leave and then looked at each other with dreamy looks on our faces. It caused us both to erupt in a fit of laughter that had me holding my side. You bagged the big one, Allie. That man is beautiful. She grinned. Yeah, he is. His friends are pretty hot, too. She laughed as a growl came from the back. Not that I noticed or anything. My mouth fell open. He can hear you from back there? She nodded. It makes it really hard to keep secrets. What secrets? Thorne shouted from the back. I laughed and tugged her with me to a booth. I momentarily forgot about my bags while the bar was slow and just focused on enjoying my reunion with my best friend. So, tell me about his hot friends. She shook her head. Hot, but bad news. They're not exactly known as being one-woman men. The good guys, though. I don't know. I passed on the chance to do that whole save a horse, ride a cowboy thing earlier. I might be thinking of taking a hiatus or something. She rolled her eyes. I've known you for a long time, Georgia. You've never truly taken a break from the opposite sex. Why start now? I grimaced. You heard part of the fighting with that last asshat. I think my taste in men has regressed. It's worse than ever. They're all overbearing and difficult to handle and just not worth the effort. Not all of them. I glanced towards the door her man had disappeared through and forced a smile for her benefit. You're right. Of course your guy is worth it. Way better than that piece of trash Eric. She shuddered, and I heard another growl from the back. I couldn't help but giggle. There was going to be a learning curve being around these man-bears, it seemed. Chapter 4 Wyatt I watched the floral scent, feeling frustrated at myself for some reason. It's like there was something in the air, but I couldn't figure it out. Something was making my skin feel too small for my body, and my lungs too weak to deliver the oxygen I needed. I felt my forehead for the hundredth time, but there was still no fever. Was I coming down with something? I wouldn't know. I'd never been sick. My bear was angry too, but damned if I knew why. Long after I was clean, I stayed in the river, letting the cold water soothe me. I let my bear swim around and catch a fish or two before shifting back and rinsing off again. I kept soap at a spot on the riverbank and used it to clean up. My mom wasn't a fan of my hygiene methods, but I came out clean enough and that was what mattered. I let my body air dry as I stretched out on the flat boulder in the sun. On the outside, the picture of relaxation. Inside, I was crazy mixed up. I was losing my mind. After a spell, I managed to get dressed and head back into town. I needed a beer or two to settle the insanity in me. Or maybe sixteen. I sighed and forced my bear down. Thorn had a strict no bears inside the bar rule. One more rule I didn't care to follow. I went straight to the bar and waited for Abram to get to me. When he did, I ordered a double whiskey and shot it straight back. He stared at me, then at the table where I normally sat with the guys. Rough day. I've never known you to start off the evening with a stiff double shot like that. I rolled my shoulders. Did you ever have a day where it felt like your bear is literally trying to crawl through your pores to get out? I think I'm sick or something. He raised an eyebrow. You think getting shit-faced is the best way to handle that? I shrugged. It's driving me fucking crazy. Thorn came up to us and gave me a strange look. You okay? Abram put the bottle up and wrapped his knuckles on the bar top. Thinks he's sick. We don't get sick. I groaned. I know. I don't know. I just have chills and my bear is freaking out. Something is wrong. 
Bro, take a deep breath in and chill the fuck out. I can't have you losing it right now. Allie's best friend is here, and Allie will kill us both if you scare her away. As if on cue, the sweetest scent filled my nose and I breathed it in greedily. Wild berries. The kind you had to know how to identify to avoid eating poison. It was sweet with an edge of something dangerous. My bear growled, suddenly wanting to fight everyone, but the sick feeling I'd had promptly settled. I straightened and looked around. What is that? Thorn frowned. What is what? Son of a bitch. The aroma was wafting in from the back. I knew for a fact that Thorn had never had anything on the menu that contained the delicious wild berries from the forest behind my house. So it had to be something else. I moved like a man possessed, drawn to the thing I couldn't identify. Fuck, Wyatt, just hang on. Thorn grabbed the back of my shirt and pulled me to a stop. You run in there like a fucking bull, you're going to scare her half to death. I froze and looked back at him. Her? He nodded slowly like he was dealing with a five-year-old. Her. Allie's friend, Georgia. Suddenly, it felt as though my bear had taken over my throat, and all I could do was utter one word. Mate. Chapter 5 Georgia I took a deep breath and tried to settle my nerves. I wasn't normally the anxiety-laden type, but something had my nerves on edge. Maybe I was just tired. It had been a long trip, first by plane, then car. Want to show me my temporary setup and help me decide what to wear to this game tonight? Allie nodded. Hey, Brady... Will you let Thorne know we'll be back soon? The lanky chef nodded and sent a wink my way. Y'all have fun. I grinned and returned the frisky wink as we headed out the back door. The fresh air helped calm me a little bit, and I shrugged off the rest of the uneasy feeling as jet lag. So, where is this trailer? She led me down the street and through a small patch of trees that opened up to a small camper, that was tilting slightly to one side. It was a perfectly fine trailer until Thorn shifted inside. He was a little too heavy for it. We're getting it fixed, don't worry. I shrugged. It's not a big deal. I stepped inside the trailer and laughed at the sloping floor with a dent in the middle. The back room was fine, though, so I went straight to tossing clothes around the bed. What should we go for? Something more casual? She laughed at the dress I was holding up. It's a football game, G. Just wear jeans and a hoodie. I scoffed. It's not just any football game. It's my first impression on this town. You said everyone would be there. I want to look good. Do you like this dress? Yeah, it's fine. I tossed it aside and grabbed the next one. Is this one better? She let out a small laugh and fell onto the bed, rumpling more clothes. I missed you. I stretched out beside her and grabbed her hand. I missed you, too. I was mad at you at first for just up and leaving me like that. But I get it now. She rolled to her side and looked at me. Do you? I nodded straight-faced. Yeah, it's the bad cell reception. She snorted and slapped my arm. You'll never make it here for longer than a week. That bad cell reception and the lack of any all-night parties will have you running back to the city in no time. I looked up at the emergency exit over our heads. Something settled deep in my bones and I smiled. I'm not so sure. Bright sunlight filled the little trailer. I sat up feeling fresh and a little bit like Snow White with the sounds of birds chirping outside the window over the bed. I looked around and noticed that all my clothes had either been hung in the small closet or folded and left sitting on the shelf next to the door. Allie. I smiled and stood up, stretching before heading into the kitchen. I needed to grab a coffee, but there was nothing there. 
I groaned. I'd meant to pick up some coffee before coming back from the game. My head cleared and I gasped. I'd slept straight through the game. I'd slept through my first night with Allie. Some best friend I was. I headed to the little shower, planning to get dressed and find her as soon as possible. Hopefully she'd forgive me for being a turd ball and passing out on her. After showering, I chose a green cotton dress that brought out the color in my eyes and twirled my still wet hair up in a bun, pinning it into place before hurrying through my makeup. Then I slipped my feet into a pair of strappy sandals and headed out. I had no idea where to find Allie, but I figured with a town center the size of a postage stamp, no way could it be that hard. I'd take a walk around town. Someone would know her. I passed the salon and peeked inside to see a couple of women getting their hair done. A pretty blonde nodded at me and waved me inside. I stepped in, taking a deep breath of salon-quality products. <sighs> it was relieving to know that no matter how far I got from home, a salon still smelled like a salon. Hey there, you must be Georgia. Allie's told us you were coming for a visit. Another blonde appeared from behind an older woman getting her hair permed. I'm Randy, and that's Samantha. Nice to meet y'all. I nodded. Over at the counter, there was a display of nail polish colors. My eyes danced over all the colors and then down at the peach color on my own nails. Do you take walk-ins? Randy smiled and waved a curling iron at me. Honey, we take anything. You want us to do something for you? I was in heaven. I have to go find Allie right now, but I'll definitely be back. Samantha grinned. She's staying at Thorne's place. Just head on down Main Street and you can't miss it. It's the greenhouse on the right. Only greenhouse in town. I thanked them and then headed down Main Street. I was surprised that I hadn't stumbled across a coffee shop. There was a small grocery store with a few vending machines out front one of which sold instant coffee. Oh well, it would have to do in a pinch. First, I stepped inside and bought a bag of donuts. On the way out, pinned to the community bulletin board was a flyer for a local survivalist tour and training. My fingers tingled when I touched it, and I had the insane urge to sniff it. Wyatt Drexel. I whispered the name, and had the same weird feeling from the night before like there was something hanging over my head, waiting to fall. I held the flyer tight to my stomach and hurried off towards the greenhouse. I suddenly had this wacky idea in my head, and it was all I could do not to run straight to Thorns to tell Allie about it. Saying the greenhouse was right down the road was an understatement. The local shops and offices stopped. The road became dirt and dust with forests on either side. And then... Finally, a greenhouse appeared. Allie was just coming down the front steps, a bag in her hands as I headed up the drive. Hey, you're awake. She gave me a big hug and then pulled back. I was bringing you breakfast. I held up the bag of donuts. I was bringing you breakfast. Where's the coffee shop around here? I didn't see one, but there's got to be one. Right? She laughed. You're out of luck. Come on, I'll make us a pot inside. She showed me into Thorne's house and got the coffee going while I sat at the kitchen counter enjoying the breakfast she'd made for me. She happily munched on a donut and told me about the football games the night before. Of course, Thorne's team won. They always do. They kick ass. Her smile turned sly. Apparently, one of the guys was hoping for a chance to meet you last night. Oh, yeah? She nodded. Wyatt Drexel. He owns a survivalist tour company. Takes tours up the mountain pretty much every week. I held up the flyer that was still clutched in my fist. I picked it up at the grocery store. I was thinking it might be fun to do as the Romans do and all. Her eyes widened slightly, and then she shoved a donut in her mouth quickly. She said something, but her words were all garbled. What? Why are you being so weird? Um, that could be fun? For some? You've never been the type to go all wilderness, though. 
What's gotten into you? I shrugged. Just a whim, I guess. I want to experience this place and what it's like here. You know, with the bears and stuff. Why not get in touch with my outdoorsy, back-to-nature side? Because you don't have one? I grinned. I'll prove you wrong. What do you do on a survivalist tour, anyway? It's like going camping or something, right? Allie shrugged. Hen shoved another donut into her mouth without answering me. I shook my head and finished my coffee. This place has got you acting weirder and weirder. Chapter 6 Wyatt Normally I was a patient man, laid back, took things easy. There was no trace of normal Wyatt today. I'd waited all night at the game to finally meet the sweet-smelling Georgia. My mate. My bear had done a fucking happy dance when he realized what he was smelling. All the tension and anger left, and we eagerly waited for our mate to show up. When Allie had arrived alone, I'd been ready to tear through the town looking for her. I needed to meet her. I had no choice but to accept that I would have to wait a little longer, though. I couldn't do anything about that. The sense of urgency around seeing her was driving me insane. I missed my serenity. I'd even somehow managed to wake up bright and early after drinking myself into a stupor the night before. I told myself I was going to the bar because I needed to talk to Thorn. But I knew good and well I had nothing to say to Thorn. I just needed to see my mate. Of course, Thorn had apparently picked that day to sleep in. I considered sitting on the front porch and waiting for him to show up, but decided that would make me look like a creeper. I swore and headed back to my office. Since when did I care about how anything made me look? My phone rang as I was coming through my office door. It still smelled like flowers, which slightly disgusted me after experiencing the delicious aroma of my mate. As I answered the phone, I dug around in the metal cabinet in the small back room for some Lysol. Hello? Hi, is this Wyatt Drexel? A light giggle sounded, and then a muffled whisper. I was just wanting to get in touch with someone about the survival tour this week. My heart picked up its pace, and I swallowed hard. This is Wyatt. What can I do for you? This is Georgia Prescott. I'm Allie's friend. She hesitated for a second and then continued. Do you have room for two more this week? My throat turned to a desert. I coughed to clear it, but I still sounded rough as hell when I spoke. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I have the space. There was some more muffled whispering, followed by the sound of skin slapping skin. I could hear Allie curse in the background, and then another slap. Sorry about that. Apparently Allie is too busy to attend this week. I guess I'll just need a reservation for one. Suddenly, my heart was banging against my chest so hard it felt like it might break itself free. My dick hardened, and I couldn't contain the low groan that escaped my mouth. Wyatt? Space for one. Gotcha. I didn't want to get off the phone with her, but I didn't know what else to say. This kind of thing wasn't my strong suit. I'll be at Thorn's bar tonight if you want to talk about the trip or anything. Maybe. I almost laughed. Maybe. She sighed. This is a very big town, and I'm a very busy woman, Mr. Drexel. I'll see if I can pencil you in. I did laugh then. Of course, I should have guessed you'd have your social calendar full. What with the myriad of offerings here in Burden. There's the grocery store, the salon, the churches, and the bowling alley. Her laughter turned husky, and I could almost feel her pulse racing through the line. Don't forget about all of my suitors. I'm a lonely girl in a town full of seemingly strapping men. I growled and didn't try to hide it. None of them are strapping, I can assure you. 
They're all terrible. All of them but you? Her voice had gone quiet, and I knew she was feeling the insane attraction, the same as I was, without either of us ever having seen the other. All of them but me. Maybe I'll see you later. My bear wanted me to beg. I wouldn't, though. Not yet. If I'm lucky. She said a quick goodbye, and then she was gone. I blew out a rough breath and shook my head. I was done for. Her voice alone had me craving her. I didn't think it was possible to survive a face-to-face -face encounter. I forced myself to sit at my desk and get some work done. I had to do something, anything, to distract myself. I sat at my usual seat at our table in the cave, my eyes glued to the door. Allie had come in an hour earlier, but Georgia still hadn't shown. You're starting to breathe heavily in everything, brother. Thorne had resorted to taunting me, while our buddies Hutch and Sterling just laughed, egging him on. Did I make fun of you like this when you were miserable over Allie? Yes, you fucking did. I wanted to rip your head off. I sat back in my chair and let it balance on two legs. My bear was restless as shit, waiting to see our mate. Allie stopped by the table and poured me a shot of whiskey. You doing okay, Wyatt? I let the chair down and nodded. Sure. She made a face at me, but it was lost because at that moment, the door opened and that delicious, irresistible fragrance floated over me again. I turned, a low growl in my chest that sounded damn near like a purring kitten. Gliding towards me was the sexiest woman I'd ever laid eyes on. Generous curves stretched a mouth-wateringly tight black dress. That was more straps than anything. Heels higher than I'd ever seen gave an alluring sway to her walk, as long auburn curls streaked with highlights hung down her back and bounced as she walked. Most heart-stopping of all were the pair of large, bright green eyes locked onto me. My blood pulsed, my dick thickened and grew, straining to break free of my pants, and it was all I could do not to tackle her to the floor of the bar and mark her right then and there. I knew I would be attracted to my mate. That's how it was supposed to work. But the idea I had in my head paled in comparison to the reality. With her smooth skin, sweet scent, gorgeous eyes, never could there have existed a woman more beautiful. Never could there have existed a woman who even came close. Chapter 7 Georgia Holy crap, Oli. How was I supposed to walk? I quickly looked down at my feet and chanted to myself, Right foot, left foot, right foot again, left foot again. There you go. Now pick your head up. Except, looking up made me forget how to walk again. The man sitting next to Thorn was drop-dead gorgeous, enough so that I was tempted to brush my fingers under my lips to make sure I wasn't drooling down my chin. As I moved closer in the dimly lit place, his face came into clearer focus. I swallowed hard. He didn't look a thing like any of the Ken doll types I usually dated. He wasn't elegantly attired, well-kept, or even clean-shaven. This guy looked like he could eat Ken dolls for breakfast. A wide, strong jaw and thin lips surrounded by a full beard contrasted with the thick, soft eyelashes surrounding his deep brown eyes. His hair was messy and slightly too long. It curled in every direction, like he had been running his fingers through it. It was sun-kissed, matching his tanned skin. A worn t-shirt stretched to cover his wide shoulders, clinging to his obviously defined chest and abs. I stumbled and caught myself on the back of another guy's chair. I didn't bother looking at him as I apologized, just straightened my shoulders and continued the rest of the way to the table. Allie slipped her arm around my waist and grinned. Guys, this is my best friend Georgia. Georgia, these are the guys. You know Thorn. 
And that's Hutch, Sterling, and Wyatt. Wyatt. I had been hoping Mr. Drop Dead Gorgeous would turn out to be Wyatt, the guy I'd spoken to on the phone. His voice had been deep as the ocean, and it had sent tentacles of pleasure coursing through my body. I was eager to cozy up to him tonight and hear more of his velvet voice. I kept my eyes on him and shot him a smile. Looks like you got lucky. I was surprised my dress didn't disintegrate the way his eyes burned into me. He stood up and held the back of his chair. Not yet. You want to sit down? I felt myself swaying in his direction, and I clung to Allie's side. I'm going to run to the little girl's room. Be right back. Allie laughed and let me tug her away from the table full of men. I realized that the other guys had been staring at us, but I didn't care. Bathroom now, I hissed. She pulled me in the opposite direction and into a small bathroom. I locked the door behind us and leaned on it. What the hell was that? She smiled smugly and raised her eyebrows. I know something you don't know. I glared at her. The sing-song way she said it grated on my nerves. Tell me or I'm shoving your head into a toilet. Poof! <laughs> Like you could. I'm bigger than you. You're taller than me. There's a difference. I flexed. I could take you. She rolled her eyes. So, last night, Wyatt smelled you, and... I made a face. He smelled me? Yeah, like how Thorn smelled me. I thought back to the things she told me and frowned. But... He was wildly attracted to your scent because you're his mate. Allie cocked her hip out and waited. When it hit me, I gasped and smacked her in the shoulder. Shut up! She winced and rubbed her shoulder. Dang, you hit like a man! I was in complete shock. I bent over the sink and tried to even out my breathing. A mate? That's not happening. It's not a bad thing, G. It's good. Really good. I don't know him at all. How can he be my mate? Oh, fuck, is he going to want to bite me tonight? I'm not ready for this. I clutched at my stomach, trying to keep from losing my lunch. I felt myself sway on my feet. This couldn't be happening. She grasped both my upper arms in her hands and shook me slightly. Calm yourself, Georgia. You look like you're going to be sick. I'll tell you what. Let's go back to my place and we'll talk about this. It's not a bad thing, I promise. Bad thing? It felt like the worst thing. When he was just a sexy man, that was one thing. A mate? That was like... like marriage. I wasn't anywhere near ready for something that serious. I was starting to sweat. Yeah, let's get out of here. That sounds like a plan. Can you try to act normal as we walk out? I don't want him to know I told you. Why, it's a good guy, and it would hurt him to know that you're running from him over this. The idea of caring what Wyatt or any other man thought felt like a ball and chain around my ankle. Why should I care about that? Jesus, this is the worst. Okay, let's go. Can you snatch a bottle of liquor on the way out? She grinned and nodded. I wouldn't be your best friend if I couldn't. We walked back out, and I stood on the opposite side of the table from Wyatt as Allie grabbed a bottle. Even though I refused to look at him, I could feel his eyes boring into me, and my body reacted as if he was stroking his large hands all over me. My nipples hardened to tight little buds, and my panties grew damp with arousal. Wyatt's beer bottle shattered in his hand as he tipped his head back slightly and took a deep breath in. When he opened his eyes again, they were glowing. I knew what that meant. Allie told me all about their shifting ways. It should have scared me that he was reacting like that to me. But instead, I had an almost irresistible urge to dive across the table and settle onto his lap. My body, the little hussy, demanded I offer myself to him immediately. Georgia. I shook myself and looked down at Thorn. Huh? 
He laughed. I asked if you were sure you wanted to do the survivalist week with Wyatt. It's pretty rough. I looked back at Wyatt, which was a mistake, because I suddenly went stupid again. Um, I'm ready for it. I'm sure I can handle him. It. I'm sure I can handle it. Allie snorted from behind me. Smooth. I cleared my throat and looked at everyone else, careful to avoid Wyatt. We're leaving now. We're going to have a girl party. Nice to meet everyone. Wyatt stood up and was coming around the table, a determined look on his face. But I was faster. I dragged Allie away before she could even kiss Thorn goodbye. Bye. Chapter 8 Wyatt I watched my little mate run away and emitted a long, slow growl. She wanted me. I could smell her arousal. I didn't get why she was running away. Thorn shook his head and thumped his beer down. He obviously agreed with my thoughts. This isn't working. She just stole my woman and my damn waitress. Sterling stood up and stretched. She's a hot piece of ass, Wyatt, but she's got trouble written all over her. I shoved him backwards a few steps. Careful. He grinned at me and then turned to the dance floor. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to go out there and find a nice, easy, sweet beauty to take home. Someone not high maintenance, who isn't going to hand me my ass before I get a piece of hers. I wanted to hit him. But despite his complete lack of class, I wondered how much of what he was saying was true. Georgia did look like trouble. I wanted her like I'd never wanted a woman before. But I could still see trouble. Thorn slapped me on the back and headed towards the bar. Good luck, man. You're going to need it. I stared at the door she disappeared through. Fuck. I knew without a doubt that my life had just gotten a whole lot messier. The rest of the weekend dragged. I smelled Georgia in the wind a hundred different times, drifting from spots she'd just been. It was like she knew I was coming her way and ran just before I got there. It was pure fucking torture. By the time Monday morning came, I was ready to tear my hair out. My bear was just as agitated as I was. He didn't like feeling toyed with any more than I did. By that point, I'd pretty much given up any hope that she'd show up for the tour. I'd accepted that I was going to spend the week in the woods without her. It wasn't my first choice, but not having the teaser of smelling her constantly dangling in front of me would be a welcome reprieve. When she showed up, wearing a flirty little pair of shorts that looked soft enough to cradle a cub, and a skimpy top that fell off her shoulders, I cussed out loud. She was dragging a rolling suitcase behind her and wearing flip-flops. She looked around at the group who'd gathered for the tour, and her face twisted. She looked down at herself, and then back at them. Well, shoot... I laughed before I could help it and ambled over. Allie and Thorne didn't mention that you might need some different gear for this. She looked up at me and tugged her bottom lip into her mouth. When she released it, there were tiny teeth marks indenting it. No, they didn't. I'm not dressed right. I don't even have one of those bag things. A knapsack? She grabbed a strand of her hair and tugged at it. I think I'm just going to head home. I reached out and lightly squeezed her shoulder, ignoring the tingling that started in my fingers and traveled up my arm. I shook my head. You're here now. Come into my office and I'll see if I have anything you can use. She surprised me by following me in. She looked around and frowned. I probably should go home. I decided to do this without thinking first. I'm a city girl. I found an extra knapsack under my desk and tossed it to her. I wasn't taking no for an answer. 
Put your clothes in there. I should have a few extra things you'll need. Are you listening to me? I stopped and turned to face her. She was a tiny thing, at least a foot and a half shorter than me and her flip-flops. And beautiful. I couldn't help the places my brain went when she looked at me with her hands on her hips and her lips sticking out in a pout. I'm listening. I'm just not letting you run back home. You wanted to do this for a reason. So let's do it. Her cheeks flushed, and she took a step back, right into a pile of gear I'd been meaning to clean up for weeks. Her arms windmilled as she lost her footing and toppled backwards. I stepped forward and wrapped my arms around her, keeping her from cracking her head open. Whoa there. She glanced up, eyes heavy. You're fast. Her eyes were flecked with gold. They were wide and full of wonder as they stared at me. Her plump mouth was slightly parted, and I could smell strawberries on her breath. I pulled her tighter against my chest, savoring the feel of her in my arms. Wyatt, I wanted to surprise... I had the sound of a woman's voice. Georgia pushed me away from her and stepped way out of my reach. Better get my stuff switched over. Stay, I've got to give you a few tools. Looks like a big one in particular. I looked over and blinked at the woman in the doorway. It took me a second too long to place her. In that second, she'd sidled up to me and waved a tin pie pan under my nose. I made you a wild berry pie from those berries I picked last week. Sarah, the floral-scented woman from my desk, smiled at me before darting a frustrated look George's way. I could have slapped myself stupid. The last thing I wanted was Georgia getting the wrong idea. I'd been a careless idiot for sleeping with Sarah, but there wasn't anything I could do to change it now. Thanks for the pie. We can all share it after dinner tonight. She frowned but didn't argue with me. Georgia, on the other hand, wasn't as magnanimous. She lugged the knapsack out of the office and was outside, already shoving clothes into it, when I walked out. I watched her. Everything she was switching over looked pink or frilly or too sexy. Did you pack anything warm? She sent me a slight glare and then looked over at Sarah. If it gets too cold, I'm sure I can just follow your lead and find a snuggle buddy to warm up with. I noticed the men around us for the first time and let out a low growl. If any of them tried to warm up my mate, I'd tear their arms clean off. You need a jacket. She tugged a pathetic-looking sweater out of her suitcase and held it up proudly. Does this pass inspection? Her attitude set me on edge because I knew she was going to be freezing when the sun went down. As much as her sassiness made my blood boil, it also hardened my dick to steel. I wanted to grab her and yank her over my knee. Nope. Her eyes narrowed, and then she looked over at Sarah again. When did y'all meet? I didn't trust the drippy sweetness in her voice. I doubted there was anything anywhere near that sweet in my little mate. She was proving to be a fiery one. Sarah looked up at me and licked her lips. Not too long ago. Long enough, though. Georgia straightened and sent a grin towards her. He's good, isn't he? Must have been even better with you. Good enough for pie, at least. Chapter 9 Georgia What the hell was I doing? I'd somehow lost my damn mind. I should have been heading back towards that crooked little trailer with the dented floor and crawling back into bed. I didn't belong on some nature hike trip. I belonged in the salon with matching highlighted blondes, gossiping about the local men. Yet here I was, sinking my claws into Wyatt so the woman with the pie would get lost. Jealousy had reared its ugly head, and I was imagining shoving her off a cliff. Instead, I focused on my current task, shoving all of my cute outfits into a giant, hideous knapsack. The three of us were gathering the other's attention. I glanced around at them, 
and noticed several men and even a couple of older women staring. You two. The woman sounded pissed. And I hoped she'd just leave. Then maybe I would be able to relax enough to leave, too. Wyatt started to talk, but I spoke over him. Don't worry about it. I'm sure it's nothing as serious as y'all. I wasn't worried. Perfect. Good. Okay. Is everyone ready? Wyatt's eyes were glued to me. I finished shoving my clothes in the knapsack, and then unzipped the front to shove in my other shoes and toiletries. I was instantly pissed at myself for playing the jealous woman. I'd shown my cards to Wyatt. He knew I was jealous, and that pissed me off even more. I looked down at my bag and crossed my arms under my chest. I thought about just going back home. The pie woman could have Wyatt. I didn't need a mate. I sure as hell didn't want one. Wyatt clasped my elbow and held it as he talked to the group. I've got to get a few last-minute things. Why don't you all head up the trail? Sarah can lead the way up. Stop at the bridge and wait for us. Sarah, the awful pie woman, stroked Wyatt's arm and smiled. We'll be waiting for you. I watched as the group marched away from us and then turned to Wyatt. I'm not going. This was a stupid idea. He grabbed my other elbow and jerked me into his chest. You're going. I started to argue, but he had to go and kiss me. It quieted my argument for sure. His lips were warm and firm, his beard tickly. It was a simple kiss, just a pressing of his mouth against mine, but my heart was racing. My body responded like a raging wildfire. I grabbed the front of his shirt and pulled myself closer. His big hands cupped my ass and squeezed until I gasped. When I did, he slipped his tongue into my mouth and I moaned into the kiss. A growl rattled his chest, and I was shocked into a moment of clarity. Just enough of one to pull away from him. Don't you dare kiss me again. I took several steps back. Wyatt glared at me. It couldn't be easy, could it? I nodded my head in the direction the group had gone. Seemed easy with Wildberry Pie Girl. You always get this jealous with men you've just met. I gritted my teeth and grabbed the knapsack. Have fun on your little trip. Where do you think you're headed? Home. Maybe even back to the East Coast. Just so long as I don't have to see you again. He grabbed my bag and threw it over his shoulder. You're going. I yanked at it uselessly. I am not going. Don't think you can boss me around just because you're my... He snapped his head around to me so fast that I was surprised he didn't get whiplash. Your what? I swallowed. My guide? Tour boss? Whatever. Tour boss? Just give me my clothes back. They're the only ones I brought with me. You can go on with your little nature group and I'll go back and get drunk at the bar. It's a perfect compromise. He grabbed another pack and threw it over his other shoulder. It was about the size of me. You come with me, or you say goodbye to your clothes. I stomped my foot. Wyatt, I don't want to. A boyish grin tilted his mouth, and his eyes turned soft. Come on, sugar. I'll make it worth your while. I should have kicked his knees out from under him. I should have snatched my stuff and ran while I could. Instead, I crossed my arms and trailed behind him. I'm only coming so you don't give my clothes to Sarah. I wouldn't think of it. He glanced back at me. Keep up. I'd hate to lose you up here. I stuck my tongue out at his back and stepped over a fallen branch. Don't you clean up the trail? That could hurt someone. I'm afraid you don't know what a survivalist is. I had no clue. I mean, I knew in theory, but I didn't know what they'd do out in the Texas woods for a week. Hike up a trail, camp out, and then come home? Seemed easy enough. As I edged the side of Wyatt's wide back to look ahead, I gulped. The trail seemed to go straight up, and I couldn't see an end in sight. Where is everyone? Did they finish without us? He laughed. 
No, they haven't even started yet. They're just up around that curve there. That's just the beginning? Yep. I was a dead woman. I needed to just chalk this up as a loss and leave. Who needed a mate? Sarah could have him. Then he turned and smiled at me, and I was done for. I followed him like the idiot I was. Chapter 10, Georgia I followed the pig-headed man up a damn mountain. A literal mountain. I don't know how I made it. In flip-flops, I'd hiked up a rocky terrain, hopped across a small river on slippery rocks, and even climbed up a rock face, only to get to... more mountain. I was already sunburned, scratched, bruised, and damp from where I'd slipped on the rocks and fallen into the river. Not to mention my massively bruised ego. Sarah had been there the whole time to enjoy herself by laughing at me. Luckily, one of the other women, Martha, had come to my rescue. She planted herself at my side and graciously helped me along. We'd become fast friends when she'd helped me pee in the woods for the first time. Wyatt was never too far off. He'd helped me up each time I fell and stayed away from Sarah, but I was still pissed at him for making me climb a mountain. Some mate he was. Allie had gone on and on about how mates protected each other, yada yada. Wyatt clearly hadn't gotten the mate protocol memo. Once we reached the top of the mountain, he'd tasked us all with finding a suitable campsite for the night. When I noticed the setting sun, a feeling of panic set over me. Everyone scattered and started putting together collections of leaves and sticks. I looked around and held my hands out. Where were the tents? Where were the sleeping bags? Martha tugged on my hand and pulled me with her. Come on, you don't want to be the last one to find a place. We could get stuck next to the shithole. I made a screeching sound. What? She laughed. I'm kidding, there are plenty of places. This is a big mountain. And the shithole? She winced. That part is unfortunately a reality. Oh, God. She led me into the woods and pointed out different things. That's an insect nest. You don't want that branch. And that up there? I looked up at the trees above us. What about it? She pointed to one spot where a branch was broken and only hanging on by a bit of bark. That's called a widowmaker. You don't want to sleep under that accident in waiting. I trailed behind her, slapping at things as I went. I felt like bugs were crawling all over me. How do you know so much? I've been doing this for a long time. My late husband got me into it, and I've continued to do it a couple of times a year. She stopped against another rock wall and nodded. Here's a good spot for you. You'll only need to lean some branches against the wall and rest some heavy leaves against it. It'll be an easy setup. I'll be just further up the slope there if you need anything. Don't stress, Georgia. Have fun with it. I watched as she trotted off and groaned. How the hell was I supposed to have fun when it was very probable that I was going to get myself killed? I kicked a rock. Stupid Wyatt had gotten me into this, and he wasn't even around to help me. I groaned and looked around. I guessed it was time to start finding some branches. As soon as the sun set, the temperature dropped significantly. I dug through my bag and pulled on my sweater, but it wasn't much help. I was leaning against the side of the mountain, shivering, when I heard a rustle of leaves. I let out a healthy scream. Wyatt appeared, alarm on his face. Georgia? I held my hand over my heart, panting. You scared the hell out of me. He shook his head when he saw me. Jesus, you're going to die out here. I pulled myself up and stumbled a bit when my ice-cold feet didn't want to work. I know. That's why I wanted to go back home. You didn't let me, and now I'm going to die because of you. 
He shrugged out of his jacket and slipped it around my shoulders. Hold on. I gasped when he effortlessly threw me over his shoulder and carried me away. Please tell me you're taking me back down the mountain. Nope. I'm carrying you to my pack so I can dress you in some pants and socks. I was almost too cold to appreciate the view of his backside. Almost. I'd rather you carry me back down the mountain and deposit me inside my toasty trailer. He carried me silently for a while and then let me slide down the front of his muscled chest. He knelt in front of me and grabbed stuff from his knapsack. Lift up your foot. He stroked his hand over my ankle. Do you ever ask instead of just barking orders at people? He looked up at me and frowned. Lift your foot, Georgia. Now. When I still didn't move, he grabbed my thighs and lifted me into the air. I screamed at the sudden falling off the ground beneath me and found myself sitting in front of him. I gave him what hoped was my pissiest glare as he slid a pair of two large sweatpants on my legs, and I tried to wiggle away as he tugged first one sock and then the other on my feet. Georgia. I snatched my foot away. I'm ticklish. He grabbed my hips and yanked me forward until I was right in front of him on the ground. I'm sorry. I should have checked on you sooner. Sarah slipped and sprained her ankle, so I was helping her. I wanted to hiss at him. Or claw his eyes. Or something. He'd been helping her instead of me. I turned my head away from him and pretended to inspect my nails. Whatever. I didn't need you. I was just about to get up and build a fire and everything. You can go back to Sarah now if you want. He caught my chin in his fingers and turned my face to his. You're pouting. I am not. His thumb raked over my lower lip, and I realized I'd been poking it out. You are. It's cute. I'm going to say this again so you hear me. I should have come to you first. I'm sorry. I tried to scoot away from him, the moment suddenly too intense for me. He wouldn't let me, though. Wyatt! Georgia? I smacked his hand and scooted back until I was just out of his reach. Are you going to take me back to my shelter? Not a chance. I looked at your shelter. It's barely two leaves strewn over a twig. That thing couldn't provide shelter for a squirrel. He stood up and pulled me to my feet. You can stay in mine. It's big enough. I looked back at the twig tent he'd put together and frowned. It doesn't look any better than mine. You're trying to hurt my feelings now. I laughed, despite trying not to. Shut up. Come on. We're going to have a little cookout at the main fire. Tomorrow things get serious. But tonight we'll all eat together. Things aren't serious yet? He chuckled, the sound sending tingles straight to my core. Not even a little bit. I frowned. I don't think I can do this, Wyatt. I shouldn't have come here. He tossed me over his shoulder again. You can do it. You have a partner now. You're stuck with me for a week, sugar, whether you like it or not. I grumbled, but it wasn't real. I was glad to have him close by. The woods were starting to terrify me, and knowing I had someone as strong as Wyatt, someone who could turn into a fierce apex predator, gave me a little comfort. Oh, I sleep naked, though. I smacked the back of his thigh and groaned. Take me back to my squirrel hut. You're an animal. You have no idea, he mumbled under his breath. I furrowed my eyebrows. Did he think I didn't know what he was? I just assumed that he knew. If he wasn't aware that I knew he was a bear shifter, then he also wasn't aware that I knew we were mates. I'd been worried that he'd want me to commit to something sooner rather than later. The way it stood, he thought I was still in the dark. Maybe I still had time to feel him out before I had to make any concrete decisions. I had time to search for that thing in him. That one thing that was off. Chapter 11 Wyatt 
I put my little mate down next to the fire, disappointed that I had to release her from my arms so soon. Not that I deserved to hold her at all. What kind of bear would help someone else before getting around to his mate, letting her nearly freeze to death on the side of a mountain? I pulled the wool scarf from around my neck and wrapped it around hers, hoping the warmth from my skin would help increase her temperature. You'll freeze, Wyatt. Take this back. I put it back around her neck and pulled her hair over it. Leave it on. She frowned. You're bossy. I just shrugged. Yeah, I am. I stoked the fire and added a few more logs, determined to warm her up. I had about a million other ideas running through my head of ways I could warm her up. But I had to take it easy. I stood up and looked around, belatedly realizing that everyone was watching us. Almost all of them were repeat visitors, and I knew they'd never seen me tend to a member of the group in quite the same way. I didn't care, though. Obviously, Georgia was out of her league in the wilderness. Even if she hadn't been my mate, she'd need special attention. Wyatt, can you come help me? I was hoping to be a little closer to the fire, but my leg's still hurting. Sarah blinked up at me from across the fire. Bill, would you mind? It'll be good practice for the week you finally convince that wife of yours to come up here and join us. Bill nodded and headed her way. Sarah made a face at me, but I was done making that mistake. I needed to be focused on my mate. I brought hot dogs for tonight. We'll have a cushy dinner tonight to start off the week, but beginning tomorrow, we're living off the land. You all know the drill. Georgia made an unpleasant sound and shrugged when everyone glanced her way. I tried to go back home, somewhere where cushy isn't used to describe hot dogs. I sat on the log next to her and grabbed the pack of food. This is going to be the best hot dog you've ever had. She glanced up at me, the firelight reflecting in her eyes and grinned. I bet you say that to all the girls. Laughter erupted from Bill across the fire, and I had to bite back my own urge to laugh. I'd never presented anything other than a professional, serious demeanor while on the tour. I wasn't sure how I felt about introducing a new, lighter side of myself. Aren't you cold, Wyatt? I was going to throw Sarah off the mountain. I realized it was my own karma biting me in the ass, but I'd slept with her before I knew my mate was going to show up. Sarah was human. She didn't know about mates. She could have at least had the sense to take a hint, however. Lord knows I've given more than one. I'm fine. All right, everyone take a hot dog. There's two more packs, so don't be shy. I took two out and passed the rest along. I've got yours, Georgia, and you just try to thaw out. She held her hands out to the fire and sent me a grateful look. Thank you. I quickly cooked the hot dogs and wrapped them in the buns I brought along. I handed Georgia hers and watched as she took a bite out of it. My thoughts had been focused on my guilt for letting her suffer without my help. But watching her slide food, especially phallic-shaped food, into her mouth made me forget anything else. My dick hardened painfully against my pants, and I couldn't contain a moan. Her cheeks blushed and she narrowed her eyes at me. Watch it, you perv. I was. That was the problem. I tucked into my own hot dog and grunted. This was going to be a long week. I was going to be spending all of my time with her, making sure she didn't kill herself on this mountain. A week without touching her would be damn near impossible. We doing our normal group fire introduction? Martha leaned into the fire and roasted a marshmallow she'd produced from a bag at her side. My bear drooled for the sweetness of the marshmallow, but I resisted. The things gave me gas. My bear couldn't care less about the gas. Sure, why don't you start? Well, most of you already know, but I'm Martha. I've been doing this sort of thing for almost twenty years. Hell, I bet I could teach Wyatt a thing or two. I grinned at her. 
she was one of my favorites. She was also someone I'd come to care about enough to introduce to Mom. Almost every time she was in town, she came over after the trip to gossip and drink wine with Mom until they both passed out. You want to teach? I'd be happy to sit back and enjoy the warmth of my shelter. She laughed. No thanks. Bill went next, followed by a new person, Alan. When it got to be Sarah's turn, I expected bad, but what she gave was even worse. I just really connected with Wyatt last week after the tour, and we shared something very special. I had to come back and see what it was between us. And after him helping me out so much tonight, I know it was real. I glanced over my shoulder at the cliff behind us. There was a slight chance I'd survive it with my shifter healing abilities, and I wasn't sure I wanted even that slim a chance. Don't even think about it. You leave me stranded on this mountain with your new girlfriend and I'll administer CPR myself, just so I can off you again. I laughed, surprising everyone. I held the daggers at Georgia was staring my way and tried to suppress the shiver wanting to work its way down my back. Don't worry. There's something I plan on doing before I go. Satisfied with the way my words left her jaw hanging, I turned my attention back to the group to find their gazes alternating between Sarah and Georgia. I had no intention of pitting them against each other. Sarah wasn't even on my radar. I simply looked at the next person and gestured. When it was finally Georgia's turn, she straightened her back and sent the group a smile that sent raw lust humming through my veins. She was sexier than any woman I'd ever seen, and just the curve of her mouth was enough to have me willing to crawl on my knees to her. Damn. I was a lost man. Chapter 12. Georgia I'm Georgia. I've never done anything like this communing with nature thing before. I usually stick to the city, so this whole survival tour is an adventure for me. Even being in Burden is an adventure. My best friend just ran away to this place, so I felt obliged to come and see what she'd gotten herself into. Martha grinned at me and offered me a marshmallow. What do you normally do? I winced. I hated that question. No matter how I answered it, someone always looked at me funny afterwards. I own a few businesses back home. They all turned their heads in my direction at once, even Wyatt. I fiddled with the ends of my hair and sighed. My dad owned Prescott Corporation. When he died a few years ago, he left the whole thing to me, for some unknown reason. They continued to stare at her, so I shrugged. I hired on people to run it, but I can't really do anything else when they call me so often. Bill finally spoke up. Jesus, I guess I sort of work for you then. I've been working at the Dallas branch for nearly twenty years. I sent him a shaky smile and nodded. I really try to stay hands off. Thank God I hadn't spent the whole day complaining about my job, huh? He laughed, still sounding incredulous. My heart ached for a second. If there is anything I can do to help at all, just let me know. While I do try to stay hands-off because the business at the higher level is just bullshit, I don't like the idea of anyone being completely unhappy if I can fix it. Bill stared at me for a few more seconds before slowly smiling. You're okay, Georgia. I can call you Georgia, right? I tossed a marshmallow at him. Of course. So what do you actually do? Sarah's voice rang out from the other side of the fire, clear and sharp. I felt like growling at her, burying my teeth and extending my claws like I was one of the local shifters. What do I actually do? She crossed her arms over her chest. Yes, you said it yourself that you don't run the business. So what do you do? Wyatt's big frame slid closer to me and I swear the air between us sizzled. It was distracting as hell. We don't normally get so personal. It's okay. 
If Sarah is that interested in me, I'll answer a question. I looked straight at her across the fire and arched an eyebrow. I do things that I want to do. I take trips across the country to see my best friend. I run several charities that I founded in my hometown. I take a pottery class at the local college two days a week. I do whatever I want. Because I can. Is that sufficient for you? She shrugged her shoulder. So you don't work. That must be nice. I resist the urge to push her into the fire. Barely. It is nice. Thanks for agreeing. Bill shifted in his seat and grinned across the fire at me. Uh, about a year ago, the company instated a no-weekends policy. Was that you? I grinned, but it didn't reach my eyes. I was about to spew some bullshit that made it seem like my childhood had been okay, like Daddy Dearest had actually been around some. In reality, I could have counted on two hands the times I saw my dad while growing up. It didn't stop me from wanting better for the workers at Prescott, though. So, some of it was true. Guilty? I remember as a little girl, always missing my dad on the weekends. He was never around for Saturday morning pancakes or Sunday morning church services. Try as he might. I didn't want to run a company that kept parents away from their children. Wyatt scooped my hand into his, and for some reason, I didn't pull away. The warmth that radiated from his body comforted me more than a wool coat could have. You're pretty special, Georgia. I laughed through an awkwardness that was wholly my own. Thanks, Bill. So, who's next? Someone besides Bill put me out of my misery by talking about themselves. Then it came to Wyatt. His deep voice carried, and his fingers flexed around mine. Wyatt Drexel. I've been doing this for a while, leading the survival tours. I started after a very unsuccessful stint at a job in town. Turns out I'm better in the wild. Sarah made a sound that convinced me that she wanted me to fight her. I didn't know if it was a weird mate thing, or if I was just suddenly the world's most jealous woman. But I wanted to show her that Wyatt was mine. I looked over at him and watched as he shoved a cookie into his mouth. I had no idea where it had even come from, but it left a chocolate smear across his lower lip. Slowly, I leaned into him and dragged my finger across his lip, catching the chocolate and leaving his mouth open and his eyes glowing. Unable to help myself, I popped my finger into my mouth and sucked off the chocolate. I moaned slightly at the taste and gave him a slow smile. Wyatt reacted in a blink of an eye. I was next to him, and then I was practically in his lap. He held me in his arms and stared down at me. Mate. My heart kicked up, determined to let me know how excited it was that he was clearly accepting me as his mate. Fear wasn't too far behind, though. There were a lot of things I considered permanent in my life. Money, fun, my girlfriends, quality shoes from well-known designers. Men weren't one. They never had been anyway. From my father to the men I dated, there was nothing long-lasting about any of them. It was scary as a hell and completely foreign to think of a man being in my life forever. Um, group? I think this is our cue to hit the hay. Martha stood up and poured dirt over the fire to put it out, then patted me on the shoulder. You'll be fine out here, honey. That man is going to take good care of you. We'll see everyone back here in the morning. Bill stood up and hefted Sarah up as well. Come on, hop along. Let's get you back to your camp and set up for the night. But I wanted Wyatt to help me. Don't you see that Wyatt is occupied? It's me or crawl. Slowly they all left, but Wyatt didn't move. He was staring down at me with his eyes flashing from a deep brown to an almost golden glow. The intensity of his stare made my body respond in a very carnal way. His nostrils flared and he settled me fully onto his lap. I want you more than I've ever wanted anything or anyone, Georgia. I wanted him too. My body wanted him. Anyway, 
Hell, my body was responding to him like a horny teenager. My mind, however, was in meltdown mode. I knew without a doubt that once something started with Wyatt, it would be damn near impossible to stop it. That thought was petrifying. I want... I took a deep breath and pushed myself off his lap. I want to go to sleep. He let out a frustrated growl, but stood up, scooping me into his arms, like I hadn't just shot him down. You're full of surprises, Georgia. Not all of them completely pleasant. I forced myself to remain silent as he carried me away. I was terrified that if I opened my mouth I would moan. The way he was carrying me, my chest rubbed against his with every step he took. It was pure, torturous pleasure, and I doubted I was going to be able to maintain the strength to keep shooting down his advances. Chapter 13 Wyatt I bit back more grumblings from my unsatisfied bear as I carried my mate to my shelter. It was on the small side for the man of my stature, and there wouldn't be a lot of elbow room. But it was secure and would do to keep the encroaching rain out. If my body heat didn't burn the thing down first... Holding my curvy mate in my arms, feeling her soft body pressing and rubbing against my chest was doing me in. I'd never felt more turned on. My bear was pacing, growling at me, demanding I mark her and deal with the consequences later. He wasn't civilized. To my bear, once I marked her, she couldn't get away from me. That was how he thought I should win her over. I knew better. Women didn't work that way, especially not this woman. She was refined, from the city, and probably knew how to verbally eviscerate an aggressive male in a hundred different ways. I had to figure out a way to explain to her what I was, so we could move on to the mate conversation. I wanted her to know me, just as much as I wanted to know her. This feeling of near desperation, to know a woman, every part of her, was new to me, yet it felt more perfect than anything I'd ever experienced. I hiked up the mountain a bit higher, eager to reach my shelter so I could crawl inside with her. I hoped the urge to mark her would settle down some once we were alone, and there were no other males around to set my bear off. So, Sarah seems really into you. I slapped George's ass hard without even thinking about it. You're toying with me now. She stiffened against me, completely at odds with the overwhelming and intoxicating scent of her arousal. Caveman! Don't do that again! My dick ached painfully from the hoarseness in her voice. I wanted to hear that voice begging me to slide into her hot little body. I stroked my hand over her ass and left it there. She was mine. She wiggled against me, her eyes narrowing while her teeth worked her lip between them. You're pretty comfortable touching me for a stranger. I reached my shelter and bent over to ease her into it. You and I both know that we were never strangers to each other. She crawled into the back of the little shelter and tucked her feet under her. Are you going to take me back down the mountain tomorrow? Take her home? No fucking way. I was going to spend this week convincing her that we belong together. Although, right now, I was having a little trouble containing my bear. Being alone with our mate wasn't helping any. He needed to run, and I needed to get out of the shelter and go further up the mountain, away from everyone to do that. I'll keep you safe this week, Georgia. You'll have fun. She looked like she wanted to argue but instead she just crossed her arms under her chest and sighed. You're a Neanderthal. I nodded. Seems that way. Chapter 14 Georgia I waited for him to come back, but the longer I sat there in his leaf shelter, the more tired I felt. 
I found a blanket rolled up in his bag, and I pulled it into the shelter. I couldn't get comfortable in his thick pants, so I slipped them off and changed into a long t-shirt and a pair of yoga pants. Then I crawled under the thick wool blanket and used his jacket as a pillow. It smelled like him and soothed something in me that I hadn't known needed soothing. He'd left so abruptly, I wasn't sure where he'd gone. I'd called him a Neanderthal, and then he just left. I didn't think he was so easily offended, but just goes to show that I barely knew him. Maybe he'd gone to get his wounded ego stroked somewhere else. Somewhere like Sarah's shelter. Anger seared through my body at that. He'd obviously been with her before. It wasn't that far of a stretch to imagine them cozying up together in the twigs and dirt. Wyatt was smoking hot and Sarah was clearly willing to throw herself at him. The visual of her bending herself over backward for him burned itself into my brain and wouldn't leave. I wasn't sure if it was the shelter or the rage I was feeling, but I was suddenly glad to be out of his heavy clothing. I kicked the blanket off my legs and shoved his jacket away from me, too. If he was going to run around on me, one day into us being mates, there was no way I was signing up for a lifetime. I'd find my own damn way down the mountain the next morning. Alone. I tossed and turned for what felt like hours. Wyatt never returned, and when I finally passed out, my face was still furrowed in anger. I dreamed of punching Sarah in her smug little puckered kisser, and giving Wyatt's balls a hello with my kneecap. They both deserved it. At some point, the rain had started, but I hardly noticed. Not until Wyatt crawled into the shelter next to me, dripping wet. His body settling next to mine woke me up, and when his wet arm was slung over me, I went ballistic. I screeched and fought to get away from him. I flailed and thrashed, and my leg connected with something solid just before the shelter toppled over, and ice-cold rain pelted down on us. Georgia, it's me. Jesus. I yanked the blanket over me and tried to be as small as possible to avoid the rain. I know it's you, you butt-face. Look what you made me do. He was already on his knees, working to fix the log I kicked out of place. What the hell's wrong with you? You want to freeze to death? I sat up, the top of my head connecting with the bottom of his chin. Crap. It felt like I'd rammed my head into a brick wall. Why'd you put your head there? He cursed as he held his mouth and leaned out of the shelter to spit out blood. You're a fucking detriment to my health tonight. My slight worry for his mouth disappeared and I poked him. You made me stay. He grabbed a canister of water and switched some around before spitting it out. What is wrong with you? Do you always wake up this volatile? I shoved the wet blanket at him and held up my hands as rain continued to soak me. This is what I woke up to. Of course I'm a little pissy. He jammed the log back into place and the rain instantly stopped flowing down on us. His hair hung wet in his face. And large droplets rolled down his bare chest. You did this. I was momentarily distracted as I followed the trail of water down to his lap. His barely covered, obviously naked lap. Are you naked? You couldn't even dress before coming back from her shelter? What the hell are you talking about? I told you I sleep naked. I crab-crawled as far away from him as I could get and glared. Maybe you should go sleep naked with Sarah. I promise you I don't mind. I'm more than happy with just the shelter. She can keep the man. I didn't have the time to scream before he grabbed me and yanked me into his arms. He pulled me over his lap and landed his hand on my wet ass once, twice, and then a third time. Words failed me, and I couldn't take back the moan I let out at being manhandled the way I was. My pride told me to fight him, but my body, and unfortunately, my heart, told me to let the man take what was his. Chapter 15 Georgia Thunder rang out around us, and I hastily scattered off Wyatt's lap. I stared at him with wide eyes and my mouth agape. Lust was pounding through me, much like the rain was pounding on the small shelter, insistent that I pay attention to it or be drowned. 
My hair was plastered to my head, and I knew I must look awful. But oddly, none of that mattered. For once in my life, I was staring at a man unconcerned about my physical appearance, as I contemplated taking him to bed. Or ground. Whatever. Come here. His bossiness ruffled my feathers. He was just what I'd called him earlier. One hundred percent Neanderthal. Don't tell me what to do. I gritted my teeth and got up on my knees. And don't you dare do that again. What you just did, I mean. He got to his knees. The blanket fell away and I was instantly aware of a very big exclamation point between us. Very big. You deserved it. You probably deserve more. My face and chest went red. Touch me again and I'll make sure you wish you'd never been born. His big hands clasped the back of my head and around my waist and he dragged me into his chest. Suddenly pressed against each other from shoulder to knee. He groaned and his hand fisted in my hair. I was born to touch you. My body went up in flames. I slammed my mouth into his and he dove for mine. Sense and reason flew out the window. I cared about nothing but him. I just needed him. His kiss made me feel like I was spinning down the mountain. My head buzzed and tingling started in the tips of my fingers, creeping slowly, taking over my entire body. Just when I thought I would float away, he lowered us to the ground. With his weight on top of me, I wrapped my arms around his shoulders to keep him there. Wyatt kissed me like I was air and he needed me to breathe. There was something that edged on desperation that made me feel a little wild. His hands captured my face and he worshipped my lips with his. Soft and gentle first, then rough and hard. His tongue slid into my mouth and swept away every other kiss I could have ever remembered. I tasted berries on his breath and flicked my tongue over his lips. Did you eat some of her pie? He growled and sat up on his knees, straddling me. Woman, I am here with you, trying to show you you're the only woman my eyes can see. Stop talking. Especially about her. He looked like some sort of dark angel, ready to ravage his woman in his cavernous lair. His face was drawn tight, part anger, part lust. His body was all hard muscle and sex appeal, and he wanted me. Just me. Don't tell me what to do. His eyes flashed pale, nearly the color of the sun as they raked over my body. Don't ask me crazy questions. I pushed myself up and nipped at his right nipple that was in front of my face. When he moaned, I flattened my tongue and licked before running it across his chest to the other one. Shut up. He rolled us over so I was on top and bucked his hips against me. Take your shirt off. Slow. I want to see you. Instead of arguing, I caught the bottom hem of my shirt and did as he demanded. I slowly pulled it up and off as my breasts tumbled out in front of him. He sat up like I had and cupped one of them in his massive hand. When his lips closed over my nipple and his teeth teased me, I cried out. He kissed the skin under my chest and then over my ribs. Pants. Off. I didn't stop pushing them down as I commented about his commands. Your vocabulary is the size of a matchbook. When I didn't move fast enough, he grabbed them and ripped them from my body, pinching and tugging my skin in the process. Moisture leaked from my core. Something about this sexy caveman brute and his eagerness to have me set me on fire. Then he was tugging me up, up, until I was kneeling with my thighs spread wide over his face. I gasped as he bit my thigh and grabbed my ass with both hands, squeezing, like he was squeezing lemons and separating my cheeks. Quiet! My shocked scream was carried away on a roll of thunder. And then I screamed again, pleasure clenching my throat until my voice broke, and all that was left was a thick, lust-filled moan. 
his tongue speared into me, fucking me as deep as he could get. His nose rubbed my clit in time with his thrusting, and in seconds, I was drifting away on the first waves of an orgasm. As my body lurched forward, I grabbed at anything I could and caught the stick holding the shelter together above us. It rocked dangerously, but managed to take my yanking. While wave after wave of orgasm rolled over me, Wyatt moved his tongue to my clit and flicked it there gently, prolonging my orgasm until I was crying for him to stop. When he did stop, it was to flip me over and slide me down until he could impale me with his cock. I felt him rock into me for the first time. He was thick and long, filling me until it was just shy of painful. Wyatt moaned and buried his face into my neck. Fuck. I raked my nails down his back and locked my legs around his waist. Yes, Wyatt, yes. He pulled out and then slammed back into me. His teeth scraped across my skin and I felt something release inside of me. I understood the desperation he must have felt earlier. I needed him, more of him, all of him. I wanted him in me, on me, over me, any kind of way I could get him. I sank my teeth into his shoulder as he hit a spot in me that no other man has ever touched before. He growled and jerked us up so that I was in his lap, straddling him. The position made him feel impossibly larger in me. Our bodies rocked together faster, harder. My breasts smashed into his chest, and the dusting of hair he had there was just rough enough to drive me closer to the edge. The rain changed direction and blew in through the side of the shelter. It drenched us, but I barely noticed, staring into Wyatt's eyes as he took me, kissing his swollen lips. I was a woman gone. His hand slapped my ass and then gripped it as he thrust into my body harder. Georgia, I'm not going to last. I tossed my head back and licked the rain from my upper lip. His eyes moved to my neck, glowing golden again. I knew what he wanted. I knew, and for a second it didn't scare me. I kissed him hard and then buried my face into the crook of his neck, leaving mine exposed. I felt besotted with him, like the world was spinning so fast around me that we could take off at any second. Wyatt's thumb moved to my clit, and he circled it once before I came apart in his arms. I clenched tight around him and felt his body jerk as his orgasm started. Then I felt him vibrate against me seconds before his teeth sank into my neck. I screamed his name as my orgasm doubled, then tripled in intensity. My body was exploding in pleasure that grew and grew until I was writhing in his arms, helpless to do anything but let it overtake me. I could feel his hot seed filling me as he growled out my name. I was vaguely aware of my body turning to jello. Chapter 16 Wyatt I held my mate in my arms, feeling complete and more satiated than I could ever remember feeling. She was mine. It might have made me a Neanderthal, but it was true. She wore my mark on her neck like a sexy necklace. She already smelled slightly of me, and I couldn't contain a roar of pride at knowing that anyone else who got close to her would know that she was spoken for. She shivered slightly and I cursed. The rain battered away at us, leaving us both dripping wet and quickly growing cold. I reached my arm out of the shelter and grabbed the small flap I'd put across the top for just that purpose. I pulled it down, and the rain instantly stopped pelting us. I found my jacket stuffed to one side of the shelter and wrapped it around Georgia's shoulders. My body was naturally warmer than hers, so I wrapped her in my arms and held her to my chest. Her head fit just under my chin, and her little hands immediately tried to wrap around my sides to hold me. Feeling her reach for me sent a new emotion flowing through my body. My bear even curled up to it like a little puppy. And one night she'd brought us both to our knees. I pressed a kiss to the top of her head. 
the mate bond was more than I'd ever expected. I'd always heard stories about how intense it would be, but there was no preparing for the real thing. I felt like I'd been knocked off my feet and dragged by the hair to a place where the sun shone brighter, where the whole world was new and different. The guys would eat me alive if they knew I was thinking about sunshine and puppies while a sexy naked woman was on top of me. Thorn would get it. He'd just made it with Allie. He'd been an idiot, though. He'd run from his mate like she was the plague. There was no way I was running from Georgia. I knew what I wanted, and I was taking it. I woke up to Georgia straddling me. My morning wood turned to rock, and I growled. What are you up to, little one? Isn't it obvious? I about choked when she lifted her hips and then took me into her tight channel. Fur threatened to erupt all over my body as I nearly lost all control. Georgia. She rocked her hips back and forth and tossed her head back. Her hair was kinked in all sorts of places, looking about as wild as I imagined it could, and dragging across my thighs as she moved. She smelled like sex and berries and rain, and a little something wild from me. I could smell our sex on her skin, and I'd never smelled anything better. Her eyes opened wide as I grabbed her hips and lifted her, just to drop her back down on my dick. You give the best damn wake-up call, sugar. She rocked her hips faster, and I swallowed the urge to flip her over and take control. She could set her own pace. I wanted to watch her use my body to pleasure herself. As her hips moved, I could feel her walls tightening on me. A pretty blush started at her chest and worked its way up to her cheeks and down her stomach as she got closer to coming. Her hands were suddenly on my chest, nails clawing into my skin as she bit her lip and came with a greedy-sounding mule. I shook with the need to take her. My hands dug into her hips, and I had to squeeze my eyes shut so I wouldn't see her beautiful face all scrunched up with pleasure. Her lip caught between her teeth, and her tongue stroking out to wet it. If I saw it, I'd come early and embarrass myself in a way that hadn't happened since I was fifteen. Wyatt! Her voice was husky and revealed her desire. How do you want me? I stilled. Tell me. On my knees? You've already had me on my back, but I'm not opposed to trying it again. Just tell me what you want. My voice was barely more than a growl when I spoke. Hands and knees. Now. She climbed off of me, then positioned herself. She was stunning that way, exposed and waiting for me. She was giving me everything, and I was determined to make sure she knew how fucking much it meant to me. I moved behind her and stroked her ass before dipping my fingers into her from behind. The ragged cry of pleasure threatened to break me. I wrapped her hair around my fist and thrust into her, a loud roar ripping from my chest as I discovered what home really meant. Right there, in my mate, that was where I was meant to be. Filling her, pleasuring her, making sure she knew damn well that I belonged to her as much as I demanded she belong to me. Mine. You're mine, Georgia. She gasped as I thrust into her harder and faster. You don't... You don't even know if you like me outside of this. I stilled with just the tip of my cock inside of her. I know... I know more than you could possibly begin to guess just how much I like you. You were made for me, sugar, and I was designed and created with you in mind. I like all of you. I like this. I slowly pushed back into her and then pulled out. Then I cupped her long, slender neck in my hands and turned her face to the side so she could see me. And I like this. I pressed my lips against hers. She moaned into my kiss and then stared up at me with huge eyes. 
how are you doing this to me? I moved again gentler, and more determined to put everything I felt into my movements, so she wouldn't be able to question my feelings. You're doing the same things to me. I'm yours just as much as you are mine. The word set something off in her. Another orgasm crashed through her body, taking mine right along with it. I would make her understand. I had to. Chapter 17 Georgia The feelings that were bubbling to my surface and threatening to break through were dangerous. They screamed commitment. They screamed forever. I wasn't that kind of girl. The longest a relationship had ever lasted for me was a couple of weeks. That's how long it took before the little annoyances became deal-breakers. Yet, even dressed in just a pair of ragged cargo shorts and a black bandana to keep his hair out of his face, Wyatt was still the sexiest man I'd ever seen. My body was definitely cheering for the long haul. The man could make sex an Olympic sport. He had me coming like a freight train and in under a minute. I'd never experienced anything comparable to the pleasure Wyatt Drexel wielded. And I was terrified of it. I was so scared that I needed to get out of the damn shelter as soon as I could, before the feeling of claustrophobia overtook me. I'd barely pulled my tank over my head when I hurried out as fast as I could, crashing headlong into someone climbing just as hurriedly into the shelter. Our heads connected and I saw stars for a moment. Then I realized a body was stumbling backwards, towards a small drop behind. I reached out blindly and tried to grab an arm or leg or anything I could, but when my fingers connected with a chest, I ended up providing just the needed amount of force to topple them backwards. The resounding scream and thud were nearly drowned out by the rustle of leaves. I blinked away the pain of a near concussion and crawled over to the drop-off. When my eyes uncrossed and I could focus again, I almost felt bad. Almost. Sarah was sprawled out in a big clump of leaves, fighting and clawing her way out. She looked spitting mad and her anger was aimed entirely at me. You pitch! You stupid, stupid bitch! You pushed me! You pushed me into poison ivy! I immediately crowded back and collided with Wyatt's hard, hot chest. I didn't push you. I was trying to save you from falling. If I'd known it was you, though, I would have pushed. What were you doing here? Why were you practically running into our shelter? Our shelter, she said with incredulity, at the same time as Wyatt said it with a smile in his voice. I turned to him and put my hand to my forehead. Looking at all the bare chest exposed was enough to momentarily make me forget how badly my brain was thundering against my skull, and I had to touch it to make sure I hadn't imagined everything. Your shelter. He grinned and hooked an arm around my waist. Our shelter, even if you were trying to run away from it. I winced and he just chuckled. I was just stepping out for some fresh air. You were running. That's okay. I like a good chase. My heart skipped a beat and moisture leaked between my thighs until the angry, shrill screaming from behind me registered and I turned back to Sarah. She was still struggling, rolling around and trying to get out and becoming more and more furious by the second. When I get out of here, I'm going to drag your ass in here and rub it all over you. Wyatt growled from behind me and wrapped his arm around my waist. Watch it. You shouldn't have been entering my shelter. The way I see it, you're in the wrong here. Now if you'll stop the caterwauling, I'll come around and help you out. I wanted to protest that. I didn't want him helping her. Helping her seemed to just encourage her. But instead, I crossed my arms over my chest and remained silent. Yes, please, come save me, Wyatt. I hissed at her. I'm glad I accidentally pushed you. It's been four days since his dick was inside me, you bubblehead. He made me scream on his desk. Four days. That's all. 
think about that long and hard before you start feeling like you're anything special. I glared back at Wyatt, who was looking like he wanted to dig a hole and crawl in, and grunted. You sure do move fast. He groaned. I didn't know you then. I didn't know you were coming. I poked him in his bare chest and marched away from him. I suggest you help your girlfriend out of her predicament. Before I got too far away, he caught me in his arms and nuzzled his face into my neck from behind. Sensations shot off in me like fireworks. My knees went weak and I dug my fingers into his arm in an attempt to steady myself. I'll walk you down if you'll just wait. His voice was thick and husky, not the only proof that he was just as affected as I was. There was also the steel erection burrowed against my ass. I could feel his need pulsing into me. Not just the normal way, but through some kind of channel that shot straight to my chest. I turned to him and stared up at him with wide eyes. What did you do? He took a step back, but his eyes flickered to my neck. What do you mean? I raised my hand and felt the bite mark. The fog from the night before suddenly cleared and I nearly fell to my knees, remembering the feeling of his teeth sinking into my neck. Pleasure, pure and intense, coursed through me, and I found myself clinging to his chest before I could help it. I, uh, I got a little carried away. It'll be fine. My anger was slow to override my shock. It flowed in like the tide, slowly but surely, as did the realization of what the bite signified. Pleasure aside, he had taken control of a situation that he had no business controlling. He'd effectively bound me to him for life, if what Allie said was accurate, without my permission. It didn't get more caveman than that. As my anger crested, I swung my hand back and used the back of it to swat him hard, in the ball sack. He went to his knees in front of me and I glared down at him. You don't just... bite someone without their permission. I shoved him backwards and then stomped off. Dramatic exits were as important as first impressions. Unsure of where I was going, I decided it didn't matter as long as it got me away from the asshole who'd marked me without even considering what I wanted. Talk about control freaks. I kicked a stick out of my way with my flip-flop and tried to decide what I should do next. Despite the bright sky above me, my thoughts were grim. Chapter 18 Wyatt After yanking a still-screaming Sarah out of the poison ivy patch, I stalked off in search of my mate. Since we were bonded, I could feel her like a damn beacon, calling my name. She had every right to be upset. I knew it, but it didn't make me want to give her any more time to herself to stew in her anger, or plot against me. Maybe the smack to the nuts had been enough of a reprimand. I neared the group campfire location and stilled. She was sitting on a log by herself, silently fuming. Her lips were moving, but there was no sound coming out. Not even any that reached my sensitive hearing. The wind caught her scent and brought it to my nose, and I growled as I stepped from the tree line. I knew you were there. I could smell you creeping in the trees. She didn't look up from the shiny phone she held in her hands. I wasn't creeping. I was trying to decide if you were casting spells or something. You're a little scary right now. She huffed a short laugh and then gave me an angry look like she hadn't meant to. Don't try to be funny. I'm pissed at you. I'm so pissed that I can't even think straight. I don't know if I want to boot your ass off the side of this mountain or punch you in the dick again. Both. Both sound really great right now. I just stared at her. She didn't know what the bite meant. Why was she so angry about it? Sugar, if you don't mind me asking, why are you so upset over a little love mark? Her face turned red, and she jerked her attention back to her phone. After punching buttons on it for a few seconds, she turned back to me with hesitation in her eyes. Thorn did the same thing to Allie. 
marking her like she's his property. You just did that to me. You practically lifted your leg and pissed on me. I don't like that. I could hear something else in her words. Something that told me that what she was saying wasn't the whole truth. I couldn't guess what else there was to it, though. So let it go. Instead, I tilted my head to the side and showed her the similar mark she'd left on my shoulder. Normally, I would have healed faster, but for some reason, her mark was staying. For someone who is so against people marking their territory, you sure as hell laid a number on me. Her eyes flamed as she noticed the bite mark for the first time. Then her breath quickened, and I watched her nipples pebble beneath the thin tank top she wore. I wanted nothing more than to drag her to me and take her again. I could hear the group closing in on us, though. We both got a little carried away, Georgia. I don't regret it, though. There's a reason we both let ourselves go. What's that? I didn't hesitate. Some people are just meant to be together, sugar. Looks like you're the lucky one, after all. You get to keep all of this. Her lips parted as I flexed my arm muscles and then grinned at her. Don't be mean to me. I'll be distracted by it all day, and then people could get hurt. She snapped back to reality as the leaves crunched, letting us know we weren't going to be alone for much longer. She shook her head, clearing it, and then gave me a growl of her own. That's a cheap way to get me to be nice to you, Wyatt. I scooted closer to her and stole a kiss. I'm willing to be cheap if it gets you in my shelter again. She sighed. I'll try. That's all I can promise. I grinned against her mouth and kissed her again, just as Martha and Bill came into view, with Sarah hobbling behind them. I didn't care. I was with my mate. They'd just have to deal with me not being on my most professional behavior for a couple of days. I looked over at Georgia. Maybe more than a couple of days. Maybe forever. The second day was usually spent teaching the basics, but everyone with us had been through survival training before, and half of them were old pros. Martha hadn't been kidding when she said she could have taught me a thing or two. Bill, too, probably. Considering Martha was a shifter, too, she was just as at home as I was in the outdoors. Instead of the normal stuff about how to build a real, tried-and-true shelter, a fire and stuff like that, we were moving on to eating. I kept Georgia close to my side as I taught the group a new trap. She paled at the idea of trapping a live animal, then killing it to eat it and survive. Instead of complaining and running from the scene, though, she stood by my side and even attempted to make the trap once. I refrained from pointing out that her trap wouldn't have caught a snail. She'd perked up right away at the idea of picking berries, and had managed to come away from the experience with stained fingers and lips. Her smell surrounded me, and I sported a boner the entire time we were there. There was nothing I could do about it. While we traipsed all over the mountain, she eventually kicked off her flip-flops and braved the elements in just her bare feet. I silently vowed that I'd rub them once we were finished. She was doing her best to learn and adapt, and it was one of the sexiest things I'd ever seen. My final demonstration of the day, before I released everyone to go out and scavenge for their dinner, was fishing. I taught them how to do it with just a sharpened stick and a piece of twine. While the rest of the group was getting the hang of it, I made my way to Georgia and smiled. You having fun yet? Her eyes lit up as she looked up at me. She was waist-deep in a stream, her clothes soaked from splashing around. She'd somehow managed to get mud on her forehead. This part. This is fun. I moved into the water behind her, wrapping my arms around her under the guise of helping her fish. Here, sometimes the stick-throwing method works better for people who are a little taller and can get a little more motion behind them. You can always use an earring or something similar as a hook, too. Part of surviving is using what you have. 
I always kept a hook in my pocket while teaching, in case someone needed a little extra help. I could tell that, even though she was enthusiastic, Georgia was going to need extra help. A lot of it. I pulled her over to the bank with me and pointed at the mud. Find yourself a fat worm. Her face said it all. There was no way she was going to stick her hand in the mud to grab a worm. Sugar, as much as I'm holding you hostage here to be close to you, I'm also doing it to teach you something, in case you ever need it. So go ahead, stick your hand in there and find a worm. That's not going to happen, Wyatt. She was shaking her head fervently. That's gross. Beyond gross. I don't want to touch a worm, and I don't want to kill one either. Her nose crinkled as she thought more about it. Let's go back to the spear method. Maybe if I find a rock to stand on or something, I'll be able to do it. Okay, we'll practice without the bait for now. Just let me show you how to throw it out. I should have known better than to give my little hellcat something sharp to throw around. Chapter 19 Georgia I did everything just the way Wyatt showed me. I drew back the little stick with the vine and hook connected, and then I jerked it forward. I wasn't prepared for the tug I felt, or Wyatt instantly swearing from where he stood behind me. I turned around and looked up at him with wide eyes. What? Scowling, he took the makeshift pole from me without a word, turned, and limped away. His silence was eerie. I followed him, worried that I'd done something to upset him. Wyatt, what happened? He sat down on the bank and looked down at his leg. His leg, where there was a shiny silver hook jammed in. He swore some more, and then just rested his elbows on his knees and took a couple of breaths. How was he the picture of relaxation despite there being a fish hook in him? I, on the other hand, went into full-blown panic mode. I'd injured my mate. I'd stuck a freaking hook into him. Help! Someone help! I hooked Wyatt. Wyatt started laughing, his eyes crinkling in a distracting way and his hands wrapped around his middle, clenching his stomach as he roared. Oh, God, he's going into shock. I knelt in front of him and cupped his face in my hands. I'm so sorry, Wyatt. I didn't mean to hurt you. Hang on, baby. Just hang on. He sobered up and held my gaze. Sugar, it's okay. I'm fine. It's going to hurt like a bitch to pull out, but I'm not dying. It's just a scratch, really. I looked back at it and felt a wave of nausea roll around in my stomach. Scratch my ass. He was hooked deep. I stifled a gag and nodded. Sure. Just a scratch. No big deal. He looked up as Martha came over. It's okay, Martha. Just got a hook in my leg. Nothing I can't handle. Why don't you lead the others back to the traps and see if anything is caught in them? She nodded and headed away, like getting a hook in your leg was perfectly normal. I put my hands on Wyatt's thighs and searched his face for signs of distress. When I found none, I blew out a big breath. This isn't that big of a deal? He shook his head. No. You're not going to watch, though. I glanced at where his fingers were gripping the hook and gasped. Wyatt, you can't just pull it out. You need stitches and a doctor and... Medicine? You definitely need medicine. He kept my face in his hand and turned it towards his. I'm fine. Just a little tug and it'll be out. I looked back down at his leg as he tugged the hook. Blood and skin ripped out, and I felt the world sway. There was blood everywhere. On his hands, on his leg, on the rocks beside him. Too much... blood. Georgia? Wyatt's voice faded as my vision grew dark and fuzzy at the corners. I felt my stomach roll again as the rocks rushed towards my face. The first things I noticed when I came to were the fact that I was wearing different clothes and my hair was wet. I sat up and groaned. 
My forehead hurt, and I cringed as I felt the skin there. On one side, there was the goose egg from Sarah, and on the other, rough skin that felt like several little scratches. I caught you before you really banged your head around, but your forehead still caught the gravel. I looked over at Wyatt and frowned. You dropped me, didn't you? He laughed. As much as I love your confidence in me, no, I didn't drop you. You just fell away from me. I did what I could. You're okay, though. I looked at his leg and noticed there was nothing there. Not even a scratch. I wanted to ask, but I figured it had something to do with his shifter abilities, so I kept my mouth shut. The more time I spent with him, the more I was worried that we didn't fit at all. I didn't want to reveal to him that I knew about mates. If I did, he'd know that I knew we were supposedly bound forever. It sucked. Contrary to what I'd have him believe, I liked being around him. I liked him, but it was obvious that we couldn't be more different. He made me laugh, and I couldn't help but be attracted to him. Yet, I still knew that it wasn't right. Even if I was the kind of girl who kept men around for longer than a couple weeks... I needed a man more attuned to my lifestyle. A man whose mere existence didn't threaten my safety with poison ivy pits and fishing hooks. A man who wasn't more accustomed to killing animals for his dinner and living barefoot in the mountains than having dinner in a four-star restaurant. Those bare feet were almost enough to be my undoing, though. I couldn't help but look at them. So out of place among the rocks and dried leaves on the ground. And yet, so right. His feet were long and tan, a match for his body. They were clean, despite the elements, and some weird part of me wanted to touch the tops of them to feel the light dusting of hair there. They were the feet of a man. A wild man. I didn't know how I was supposed to deal with letting him go when even his feet made me swoon. None of this makes sense. You look like you're experiencing a bunch of emotions over there. How do you feel? We were alone by his shelter. I looked up and met his eyes, and my heart immediately raced. I tried to ignore it. I didn't know what it needed. It was stupid. Like I don't belong? His face darkened, and he scooted closer to me. He caught one of my own feet in his hands and started massaging it. You belong. I just shook my head. I was suddenly feeling like a big, ugly wart. I was out of place. I didn't belong here. I was a hindrance to anything he wanted to do with the rest of the group. He probably did need someone like Sarah. Someone who could be a partner to him. Someone who wouldn't accidentally walk off the side of a mountain if left to her own devices. I shook my head again. What was I thinking? What had gotten into me? It didn't matter what he needed. I didn't need him. Right? Right. That was the way I'd lived my whole life. Never needing any man. Never thinking about what a man needed from me because it didn't matter. I wouldn't be around long enough to give it to them anyway. Yet, looking at Wyatt, I was plagued with thoughts of all the things he would need that I didn't have... How is it possible that a man who could squelch every doubt and insecurity I'd ever had about my body in a matter of hours could also be the man who made me doubt everything about the way I lived my whole life? Bill caught a couple of squirrels for dinner. Yeah, it was about time for me to get back to the city. At least the town. The universe had messed up when assigning mates. I couldn't be farther from the right woman for Wyatt. I mean... He couldn't be farther from right from me. Although, if that was true, why did it hurt so bad to think about letting him be with Sarah, a woman who was clearly a better fit for him? Chapter 20 Wyatt Georgia had been mostly silent since she regained consciousness. 
She'd just been staring at me and every so often mouthing things to herself. If I was a weaker man, it would have scared the hell out of me. She was a thinker, and if the frown on her face was any indication, the thoughts weren't good. I felt like she was searching me, looking for flaws. Her eyes had lost their heat and gained something cold and calculating that told me she was probably quite good at heading a large corporation. I washed your hair in the creek. You threw up in it a little bit. Her eyes widened, and then she finally looked away from me. So, squirrels, huh? I grabbed her other foot and rubbed it. They were still muddy from the fishing, and I found myself knocking off dried bits as I went. A little mud didn't bother me, but her face froze in horror when she noticed what I was doing. She snatched her foot away from me and curled it under herself. Hey, what's wrong? Stupid question. Her eyes narrowed and some of the heat returned. What's wrong? Seriously? I pushed someone into a pit of poison ivy, hooked you through the leg, wounded myself multiple times, and I look like death warmed over. I can't even see my face. Not that I want to, but I can imagine how awful it is. I'm meant for salons and spas and cordon bleu, not squirrel. I looked at the darkening sky and blew out a breath. I thought you were having fun today. You seemed happy while you were fishing. She hesitated a second, but then her determination set her chin up a notch higher. Do you know what I normally do? I throw parties, all kinds of parties. I throw wild parties that involve lots of liquor. Sometimes male strippers. I throw fundraisers that command a thousand dollars a plate. I throw parties that involve caterers, fancy finger foods, and sometimes chocolate fountains. That's right, fountains of chocolate. Fountains of chocolate make me happy. Annoyance chewed at me. Do they? There was another hesitation. One big enough for me to drive a truck through. Yes, they do. I want to go home. I felt myself growing angrier and angrier. She wasn't just insulting Wyatt, the guide. She was insulting me, rejecting me. Pain seared through me like a dagger, but I ignored it in favor of anger. Fine, you can run back home to your parties and chocolate fountains. Tomorrow. Tonight, you're going to join the campfire and at least make an attempt to have fun. Pretend, if you have to. A handful of rocks suddenly hit my legs. She scowled at me. You're not my father. You don't tell me what to do. Did your father ever actually tell you what to do? Did he lay down any rules for his precious princess? Because it sure as hell seems like you spent your whole life doing only what you want, when you want. Branch out some. Don't be such a spoiled brat. I was on a roll. Also, no more male strippers. Jesus, Georgia. She surprised me by snapping her mouth shut and nodding. When she did speak, the cold, hard look was back in her eyes. I could detect a sliver of pain, but she tried to hide it. You're much closer to the truth than you know. You know what? I think I will have more fun tonight. That sounds perfect. I watched in horror as she dragged a bottle of tequila from her bag. A bottle I'd somehow managed to miss when she was repacking her clothes into my knapsack. I'd been too distracted by the tiny underwear. You can't drink on a survival tour, sugar. Her eyes flashed. Try and stop me. And stop calling me sugar. I'm not your sugar. I'm not your anything. I wanted to grab her and shake some sense into her, but I didn't trust myself not to actually shake her, so I kept my hands to myself. Fine. Get drunk, and then get yourself killed. Smart. She stood up, clutching at the pants I'd pulled onto her, and glared at me. This conversation is over. I grabbed her arm as she tried to pass me and yanked her down onto my lap. We're not done here. 
She fought against my hold, but it was useless. I wrapped one arm around her chest and another across her hips and tucked my chin into her neck so she wouldn't be able to headbutt me. It didn't take long for all the fight to drain out of her. I hate you right now. The word stung like a slap to the face. An ache formed in my chest that took away my breath and knocked the fight right out of me. I hadn't thought things through enough. She could walk away from me. She was going to walk away from me. She didn't fit into my life any more than I fit into hers. I'd marked a woman who wasn't going to stay with me. The realization struck me hard, and I pushed her away from me while climbing to my feet. I needed to shift. I needed to run and roar and claw the shit out of something. You can find the group. I'll be back later. I didn't look back as I left. I just wanted to escape. I yanked my shirt off as I went and struggled to hold on, barely making it out of sight before shifting. My bear roared, his pain just as palpable as my own. I'd spent the time she was unconscious planning how I was going to tell her about my bear, about shifters and mates, about everything. I knew she'd be freaked out, but I thought it would be okay. Turns out I worried needlessly. There was no point in revealing my secrets to a woman who didn't want me. She'd said it herself. She hated me. I climbed to the highest point of the mountain and released another roar. My heart was breaking, cracking in two, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. My mate didn't want me. Somehow the universe had messed up. I thought of my own parents, and the awe with which Mom talked about being mated. She'd loved Dad with her whole heart, and then some. I didn't understand why things didn't happen for me the way they had for them. I guess sometimes it just didn't work out. Chapter 21 Georgia Everyone takes a swig. Them's the rules, friends. I laughed as I took yet another swig from the bottle and handed it off to Martha. I'd been at the campfire for close to two hours. I knew because I'd been checking the time on my phone religiously. I dragged it out of the shelter once Wyatt had stomped off. I thought about calling Allie and telling her to come rescue me. I thought about calling the airport and scheduling a flight. Hell, I even thought about calling the cowboy who'd driven me into town and promising him anything he wanted if he could find me. Only that last thought made me wretch after being with Wyatt. Plus, my phone still had no service, so I was just using it as a clock counting off the minutes that Wyatt had been away. I'd hurt him. I knew it and I hated myself for it. It was for the best, though. We weren't going to work. He didn't like me. Not the real me. He wanted someone else. He was in denial about it, but he'd realize it after I left. You going to pass that? Sarah sneered. She wasn't my biggest fan, but she loved tequila. She was covered in an oozing rash that made me want to rub myself with sandpaper. I handed her the bottle and then turned back to the fire. We need music. Music and dancing. I have some music on my phone. I like to play it to go to sleep. It's not very loud, though, Bill spoke up. I grinned. All righty, this is my kind of surviving. I grabbed his phone and one of the metal cups connected to Martha's pack and started the music app, then slipped the phone into the cup, amping up the sound. Bill didn't have any of the music I usually listen to, but he had some songs we could dance to. They were old, but they worked. Come on, let's survive my way. Bill threw up his hands. What the hell? Wait until my wife hears about this. I laughed. Laughter was good. It meant I was having fun. Right? That's what I always told myself back home. I was laughing and having a good time, so I wasn't missing anything. 
Nothing was missing from my life. I was perfectly fine. Just me. All by myself. I didn't need anything or anyone. Everyone eventually joined in. Even Sarah, although she stuck to just drinking and nodding her head to the beat of the oldies. It was fun. So much fun that I almost forgot that I wasn't in a beautiful hotel somewhere, surrounded by movers, shakers, and trust fund kids. The night sky was better mood lighting than anything I could have put together, and the smell of the campfire created a buzz of excitement. I managed to temporarily forget how miserable I was and focus on the festive mood around me. It wasn't easy. Every branch I heard snap, I jerked my head around to see if why it was returning. I wanted to see him. I wanted to feel his body against mine one last time. Maybe I was feeling the liquor more than I was admitting. Martha brought out more marshmallows, and one of the men, Alan, cooked up what I decided was chicken, but was probably squirrel. I still wasn't eating any of it, though. Instead, I munched on berries that Bill had picked earlier. The party was going strong. My bottle was gone, but someone had pulled out another one, and it was going fast, too. I laughed until my sides hurt. Then I laughed more. Laughter was the only way I knew to keep everything out. After another hour had passed, I sat down on a log and let my head fall back. God, it's beautiful up here. It is, isn't it? I wish I was enjoying it more. I looked over at Sarah, surprised to see that I'd ended up so close to her. I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to push you. I didn't even know it was you until I looked over the ledge. She was blitzed. Her eyes were barely open as she smiled, actually smiled at me. It's okay. Everyone's letting me drink more of the liquor because they feel sorry for me. I gave her a delicate high five and nodded. I like the way you're turning it into a positive. He doesn't care about me. I know that. I'm not stupid. I just wanted to get back at my boyfriend. Her eyes filled up with tears, and she coughed out a sob. He's been cheating on me for months. He doesn't know I know, so I came up here and I slept with Wyatt. My throat closed on a growl and I nodded, suddenly unable to articulate. I got back home and confessed to my boyfriend. You want to know what he said? She didn't wait for me to answer. He just shrugged his shoulders and asked if I wanted a fucking trophy. He didn't care. I winced. He sounds like a dick face. He is. He didn't care that I'd slept around. He told me that he was glad because now he doesn't have to feel so damn guilty about breaking up with me. He broke up with me. I patted the top of her head, the only part of her not covered in oozing rash. You're better off. He doesn't deserve you. She sighed. Am I? I came back here in a daze. I tried to hook up with Wyatt again. I made myself look like a psycho stalker chick. I'm not a psycho stalker chick. I just... I feel... I feel like I'm about to come unhinged. I was with him for seven years. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I would hug you, but you've got the... She cut her eyes to me, and I abandoned that line of thought. Anyway, you have every right to go a little crazy. No one would think less of you for it after what you've been through. Plus, no one really knows you, right? Maybe the forest isn't the place to heal from a broken heart. Maybe a salon and a giant box of chocolate would serve you much better. She dropped her head back and blew out a shaky breath. I would love a salon. This stuff is great, but I can't think straight right now. Much less try to catch a damn rabbit for dinner. They eat rabbits? My voice had gone up so high that the rest of the group turned to me, startled. I waved them away. God, that's barbaric. Look, I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going back down the mountain. I could use a guide to get there. You seem to know your way down. How about it? I'll treat you to a salon experience to make up for my part in causing this rash. She stared at me, 
her eyes opening a little wider. Sure, that would be nice. I patted her head again, and then grabbed the bottle she'd been holding. You've got a tour to lead down the mountain tomorrow. No more liquor for you. She pouted, but I ignored her. I was too busy noticing Wyatt from across the dancing flames of the campfire. He'd finally come back. And in no better spirits from the downtrodden look on his face. I wanted to go to him. I needed to make sure he was okay. I headed his way and managed to get my foot caught in the strap of Sarah's pack. I went down hard, no one nearby to catch me, and landed with my face inches from the fire. I scrambled back and sighed. That was a close one. Time seemed to stand still as I glanced up, noticed everyone rushing towards me at the same time. I was about to freak out and scream at them to tell me what was going on when I smelled it. Burnt hair. I looked down. Correction. Burning hair. Chapter 22 Wyatt I couldn't get the sight out of my head. Georgia standing there with her heart on her sleeve, looking like she wanted to run to me. Then, Georgia standing there with the ends of her hair going up in smoke. I'd rushed over to her, but she'd still lost a lot of hair. A lot of it. The ends were fried and blackened and smelled terrible. It oddly complimented the purple bruise and red scratches on her face, not to mention the other scrapes and bruises covering her. When she passed out again, I'd carried her back to my shelter and tucked her in. I couldn't help crawling under the blanket with her and wrapping my arms around her. She'd had a hell of a couple of days. I'd never seen a person more incompatible with the wilderness. She'd entered my life with pretty manicured nails and salon-perfect hair all shiny, with expensive highlights and lowlights. I was giving her back to Allie broken and beaten with cuts, scratches, bruises, and badly singed hair. I felt like a fool. I'd marked a woman who couldn't have been farther from what I needed. I had to let her go, and I knew that there was a chance I'd lose my mind. Mates were supposed to stay together. They were supposed to mesh, like Thorn and Allie. They made sense, like Mom and Dad. They made sense, too. Pain ate away at me until I couldn't remain beside her anymore. I got up and sat outside the shelter, leaned against the mountain wall behind me. Sleep escaped me, and I struggled with my thoughts until the morning sun started to peek out over the top of the mountain. I carried myself to the stream and washed up before heading back to the shelter to check on Georgia. I found her bent over her pack, her charred hair pulled back in a short ponytail. She was shoving stuff into the knapsack while simultaneously holding her head and then her back. You okay? She jumped and then groaned. No, I'm not okay. I'm going home. My bear roared at me to stop her. He demanded that I make her want us, even though I knew it was useless. I gave it one last lame try. You giving up? Her eyes were damn near death ray lasers as she turned to me. Look at me, Wyatt. Look at me. I'm a mess. I need to get out of here before I kill myself. I lit my head on fire last night. I don't belong up here. I don't belong with... Me. I finished for her. You don't belong with me. A flash of emotion pricked her eyes. Pain? I don't. I need to go. I need to go back to something I recognize. I wanted to fight, even though I knew she was right. It was hard to just let go. It was obvious how out of place she was. It would never work. I was on the mountain nearly year-round. 
she'd be alone and miserable in town. She would never be happy with me. Her hands fisted at her side and she nodded. Okay. I'm going. Thanks for the fun, Wyatt. I caught her arm and nearly doubled over at the hope in her eyes. She wanted me to fight for her. I wouldn't force her to stay, though. How are you getting down the mountain? She jerked away from me and headed off. Sarah's taking me. Have a good rest of your tour. I let her go. I let her leave me standing there, with a gaping hole that had just been ripped out of my chest. I sucked. The situation sucked. Fucking life sucked. I yanked my shelter down and threw my pack against the rock wall. Anger and frustration threatened to take me to my knees as I felt her move farther and farther away from me. I wondered how it would feel when she was over a thousand miles away. Would I still hurt like this? Would I still hate myself? The group was in fine form that morning. The ones who weren't hungover were visibly disappointed to learn that Georgia was gone. Martha especially. I could see her disappointment with me on her face. She was disappointed in me for allowing Georgia to leave. What the fuck was I supposed to do? I was about to send everyone out to gather more food when I felt something in me shift oddly. I could suddenly feel fear, and it wasn't my own. I knew instantly it was Georgia. Something was frightening her. I took off running. I didn't know how far she'd gotten down the mountain. It couldn't have been far, but I had to get to her fast. I didn't pause to undress before I shifted, leaving my clothes in tatters. I galloped headlong towards whatever had scared her badly enough for it to have reached me through the mate bond. I smelled her and heard her before I saw her. Damn it, Wyatt, what are you doing? You're scaring me. My stomach dropped and I stumbled. Who was she talking to? I know I should have told you that I knew, but it doesn't matter now anyway. For God's sake, stop, you're being an ass. I cleared the tree line and found her, one hand on her hip, wagging a finger in the face of a massive black bear sow. The bear wasn't a shifter, and from the scent, I could tell she was protecting her cubs. There weren't a lot of wild bears in the area, but they did pass through occasionally. It was just George's luck that she'd run into one, a mama protecting her babies no less. I roared deep and loud and circled around the bear. I had her full attention, thank God. I was praying Georgia would run, but she didn't. She hunched over and started dragging an unconscious Sarah farther away. I was bigger and stronger than the sow. But I wasn't a fool. Nothing was more dangerous than a mama guarding her babies. She'd be more than willing to fight to the death to protect them, and I wanted Georgia farther away in case anything happened to me. But she wasn't budging. My time circling the bear was done. She lunged at me, and I found myself in a fight with one fierce, frightened mama bear. A fight I didn't want to lose, but had no interest in winning, either. Chapter 23 Georgia It was all the evidence one would need to prove that some people just could not survive in the wilderness— I'd managed to stumble on what was probably the only full-grown bear for miles around who wasn't a shifter. How the hell did I know that wasn't Wyatt? I lectured it, scolded it, stomped my foot at it, and even pointed my finger in its face. Then, when Wyatt had actually shown up, I'd immediately known. It was weird, but I could feel him in his bear. He was majestic to watch as large as the first bear was, why it was even larger. His coat was thick and shiny, silky. There were sun-kissed streaks in his fur, just like in Wyatt's hair. His bear even had the same beautiful golden-brown eyes. I didn't have time to admire him, though. 
I grabbed Sarah and dragged her away from the impending fight. She'd passed out cold at the sight of the bear, and was dead weight as I dragged her by the armpits. I kept my eyes on the bears, wondering what was going to happen. Wyatt circled and dodged swipes, careful to keep himself safe, but he never attacked. He just let it come at him again and again. He wasn't trying to hurt it at all. He was tiring it out, it seemed. Martha suddenly appeared beside me, naked as the day she was born. I averted my eyes and focused them back on the fight, offering her the sweater I had on. Keep it, honey. We'll need to get you out of here. Why, it's going to be distracted if you're standing here in the way of danger. I swung my face back to her. You know? Of course I know. I'm like him, only a little different. Come on, Georgia. Grab Sarah's legs. Let's get out of here. I don't want to leave him. What if he gets hurt? Wyatt roared in my direction and I jumped. Okay, let's go. We pulled Sarah as far away as we could before the terrain got too rough to carry her. Then we settled her against a large rock and waited for her to come to. What was that? Who was that other bear? Why was it so angry? Honey, you stumbled on a mama bear who was agitated and upset. She was just protecting her cubs. Wyatt will wear her down, then run her off. He won't hurt her. I swallowed and patted Sarah's cheeks. Come on, Sarah. Wakey, wakey. Why are you leaving? I met Martha's eyes and fought the urge to cry. She'd taken better care of me in the few days had been on the mountain than my own mother had during my entire childhood. Her very presence made me want to break down and tell her everything. I don't belong here. That boy is a damned fool. I shook my head. It's not even his fault, really. Whoever arranges these mate bonds just got it wrong this time. I'm sure it's happened before. He needs to fix this with you. Mate bonds don't happen by mistake. They're special and faded. If you two are mates, it's for a reason. I sent a little prayer of gratitude up when Sarah started coming to. I patted her cheek again and then wiped it on my shorts. I felt bad, but she was still covered in rash. What happened? I sighed. Too much. Everything. Nothing. There was a bear attack. Why did Martha came to save us? Sarah turned her head towards Martha and gasped when she was face to face with Martha's naked chest. Where are your clothes? Martha laughed. Lost them in a bear fight. Sarah, still groggy and shaken, seemed to accept that. She took a few steadying breaths, and then her eyes widened as she stared off at something over my shoulder. He must have lost his, too. I turned to find a furious and very naked Wyatt standing over me. I quickly stood up to avoid getting smacked in the face with his junk. Are you okay? He grabbed my arm and pulled me away from the two women. You knew. So, you're okay, then? You knew what I was, and you knew that we were mates. I stared up at him, a mixture of desire and sorrow warring inside. I knew. His expression contorted in pain, and he pushed me away from him like my touch disgusted him. You knew, and you still walked away from me. I steeled myself and drew together every ounce of aloof indifference that I possessed to muster a blank expression. I hoped my expression masked my anger that had temporarily replaced my pain. You knew, and you let me walk away. He gritted his teeth. Jaw muscles twitching furiously. I noticed his hands were white-knuckled, bald and fists at his side, and his eyes were hard. His mouth had snapped shut, forming a hard line, signifying he was done talking. He'd gotten what he needed to say out, and that was that, apparently. I turned and walked back over to Sarah, who was staring at Wyatt's body. I resisted the urge to smack her. You still want to go to town with me? She looked up at me, and must have seen something that she recognized. Heartbreak. She nodded and pulled herself up. Come on, 
You owe me a spa day. A much-needed spa day. Martha glared at Wyatt over my head and then looked back at me. I'm coming down with you two. Start down without me and I'll catch up when I have my bag and clothes. I didn't look back at Wyatt. Just nodded and pulled my knapsack on with shaking hands. I was close to sobbing and throwing myself on the ground. The heartache I was drowning in was too much. Actual, physical pain radiated from my chest, and I rubbed at the spot. Sarah caught my hand and squeezed it. It'll be okay. I tried to smile, but a tear fell instead. I helped her get her pack on, and then we headed down the mountain without looking back. As much as I need this spa day, you need it just as bad. Have you seen your hair yet? Maybe I would smack her, after all. Chapter 24 Wyatt We're going to check the traps and see if we can't catch some fish. You interested in coming? I looked up at Bill, surprised to find the man standing in front of me. I hadn't even heard him approach. No, I'm good here. He shook his head and chuckled. Yeah, I can see that. When's the last time you bathed, son? You smell like a wild animal. I looked down at myself and shrugged. What the hell did it matter? I'm good, Bill. He clamped his hand on my shoulder and squeezed. Are you sure you want to be here instead of chasing that girl of yours? I growled and he held up his hands. Forget I said anything. We'll be back at the campfire in a few hours, probably. I watched him go and winced as my bear retreated farther into me. He was a moody son of a bitch. It had been two days since we'd watched Georgia go, and he was throwing a tantrum. He didn't get it. She'd known about what I was. The worrying I'd done had been for nothing. She'd known, and she was still okay with leaving me. I swore and stood up, ready to pace a canyon in the mountain. My bear wasn't the only moody asshole. I felt like screaming at anyone who approached me. I'd lost any semblance of professionalism. When the men suggested we stay a day longer, I just nodded. It was better to be away from town anyway. Away from prying eyes and Georgia's scent. Away from anyone who could take one look at me and see what a sorry excuse I was. I sat back down and held my head in my hands. I went back and forth between feeling angry enough to chase Georgia down and shake her, and feeling devastated enough to forget who I was and just cry. She'd knocked me on my ass. Not that she gave a shit. I kicked my pack away from me and groaned. I was going insane. My bear didn't care about any of it. He just wanted to go to our mate. He wanted to grab her and scoop her up and do anything she wanted him to. He was a soft piece of fluff, that was for sure. He didn't care about who was right and who was wrong. It was simpler than that for him. There was no gray. Just mate. For the millionth time, I'd wondered if she was already gone. Had she already left Burden? She'd probably run back to the city as soon as she could get a ride. I didn't know how it felt for a human to walk away from her mate. Was she hurting like I was? Or did she just consider it another failed attempt at romance? Maybe she was fine. Deep down, I knew through the mate bond that connected us, she wasn't fine. No matter how much I didn't want it right now, the bond was there, and I could feel a constant ache from her end. I hadn't known that it was her pain and not my own at first. It was only when my own feelings swung towards anger and betrayal that I noticed that the pain stayed constant, like a mourning cry that never ceased. She was hurting. It never wavered. It never faded. The realization was enough to take me to my knees. My mate was hurting. But she wasn't my mate. There had been a mistake. 
At least that was what I told myself again and again. Then again we'd bonded. I stood up and resumed my pacing. I knew the story about Thorne's mom. Her mate had abandoned her and she'd gone crazy. She had slowly withered away and eventually it killed her. By the time she went, she was barely human anymore. I wondered if that would happen to me. Was that what I had to look forward to? Losing my mind and slowly dying? Mom would have to bury me. Would she survive the loss of her mate and her only son? The pain rippled through me until I shifted and sank down on all fours. My bear refused to run. Refused to do anything. He just sat there, staring at the ground. Good to see one side of you has the sense to be depressed about this shit. I shifted back as soon as I realized Thorn was standing a few yards away from me. Yet again, I hadn't heard nor smelled anyone approach. I grabbed shorts from my bag and pulled them on. What are you doing here? He crossed his arms over his chest and shook his head. You look like shit. I shrugged. So I'm told. Shouldn't you be at home enjoying your mate? You don't get to sound bitter and jealous when you have a mate of your own who's sitting in my kitchen crying her eyes out. You fucking dumbass. All that talk about wanting a mate and knowing that you'd accept her with open arms when she came along, and then you pulled this shit? I hit my chest and stepped closer to him. I did accept her. She didn't accept me. She left. He just rolled his eyes. I never knew you were such a selfish fuck, Wyatt. I thought you were one of the only ones of us who didn't have his head so far up his ass he couldn't see the rest of the world. I was wrong. Here you sit, knowing your maid is in pain, and still you put your own shit above her. You let that woman leave, and you're as good as dead, man. You need her. I rolled my eyes. She doesn't want to be here. She hated it. This is where I live. This is my life. She hates it completely. She wants to be in the city. What can I do with that? Someone fucked up. The universe messed up when assigning mates. The two of us were never meant to be. Thorne threw his hands in the air. I came to try and talk some sense into you, but clearly you're beyond that. You're stupid enough to claim she isn't your real mate after you marked her. That's beyond what I can help with. You've been my best friend for as long as I can remember, Wyatt, but this is the first time I've seen you act so cowardly. The woman tried to fit in with you. Yeah, she is a city girl, yet she tried to do this wilderness shit. What'd you try for her? Is she just supposed to change everything about herself to suit your needs? Yet you get to go on as usual, la-di-da, cause heaven forbid you make sacrifices for her. You don't want a mate. You want a fucking ball of clay ready to be molded to whatever it is you need. I charged him before I knew what I was doing. My shoulder hit him square in the chest and we both went flying backwards. It'd been ages since we'd fought but neither of us took long remembering how to inflict pain on the other. It was only after I took an elbow to the head that I flopped back on my back and stared up at the bright sky. I'm lost, man. We don't fit. We couldn't be more different. He punched me once more in the side and then leaned against a tree trunk. Maybe you need something different, man. You spend almost every waking hour on this mountain, you're more bear than man. Maybe you need to be reminded that you're not just some wild animal living out on his own. Maybe, just maybe, you need to join the human race more. And if anything, that woman will make sure you live your life to the fullest. I looked over at him and rubbed my hands down my face. What's she been doing? He growled. She's gotten my mate shit-faced for the past two nights. They danced on my fucking bar. Hell, she had half the women in town dancing on my bar. She refuses to listen to the jukebox and plays hip-hop. I'm losing my mind. 
When she isn't drinking herself silly, she's sobbing. In my house. With my mate. I haven't gotten close to Allie in days. You need to get it together and come get your mate from my house. She's driving me insane. I closed my eyes against the wave of pain that hit me. She has a tendency to do that to a man. Chapter 25 Georgia I tipped the bottle of champagne and looked around the salon. Every chair in the place was full and music was pumping through the speakers. Cups were emptying at a steady pace and requests had quickly gone from simple blowouts and highlights to rainbow colors and wild haircuts. Inhibitions were gone. Brandy and Samantha had their hands full over half the women in burden wanting to branch out and get in touch with their wild sides. I'd needed to get out of Thorne's house, so I'd organized a salon party. Crying on his couch was getting to both him and me, and Burden was sorely lacking in the party department, so I'd waged a party march on Brandy and Samantha. I'd needed to get my hair fixed anyway. I looked back at Brandy and smiled. I've decided. Cut it to here and add some highlights. Why not? I thought of Wyatt's sun-kissed hair and hiccuped out a sob. Forget the highlights. Fortunately, she'd gotten used to my sudden outbursts of tears. Honey, we don't have to cut it short. I could just trim off the burn bits. I shook my head. I want to change. It's new and improved Georgia now. All new, all improved, starting with the hair. Sarah looked over at me. Another woman was brushing some sort of soothing avocado mask over her skin. Her eyes watered and she drained her cup. We should open some kind of women's only salon bar. Just us drinking, having fun, and getting beauty treatments. Maybe talking shit about the jackass men in our lives. This is good for us, letting it all out. I hadn't even begun to let it all out. Not yet. I had stuff eating away at me that I was saving for the next guy who tried to play around with my heart. If there ever was a next guy. I couldn't even imagine another man right now without my heart throbbing in agony. I've figured it out. I'm going to be a lesbian from now on. Forget men. Forget Wyatt. Cheers rose and then tapered off as they realized I was crying again. Allie came over from where she had been getting a blue streak put into her hair. Pea brain, he can't actually let you walk away. He marked you. I waved my hand and settled back into my chair. I don't want to talk about him. I just want Brandy to cut my hair off and then we'll all go to the cave and drink some more. And I'll find myself a girlfriend to settle down with. No more letting my heart take walks on its own. My heart is grounded and that's final. She laughed. Okay, we'll do it your way for a little while longer. We all continued to drink, continued to bitch about men, and continued to make rash decisions about our hairstyles. Much needed change was in the air. By the time we got to the bar that night, we were already drunk and feeling more than a little crazy. Abram looked up at us from behind the bar with wide eyes and held up his hands. Ladies? Please keep it together tonight, okay? His eyes landed on me. You have power, Georgia. And I'd appreciate it if tonight you used it for good instead of evil for a change. I laughed and hip bumped Allie. Did you hear that? I have power. She grinned at the older man and patted his cheek. We'll be good, Abram. I promise that no one will break anything tonight. Isn't that right, Ronnie? The quiet woman blushed and licked her lips. It was an accident. I slipped off the edge of the bar. I had to catch myself on the light. I threw my head back in a fit of giggles. She really had let loose. I was hoping she did it again tonight. She deserved to have fun. You did what you had to do, girl. We got set up at a couple of tables in the back, and the night went much like the past two nights had gone. Laughing and drinking and talking turned into dancing and more laughing. I knew I was avoiding an issue that I'd have to deal with eventually. 
but for one night, I wanted to feel okay. I slipped behind the bar and turned the country rock music off before replacing it with a dance mix. Some of the cowboys in the back grumbled until they noticed all the women swarming to the dance floor. Before long, it was an all-out bash. I spotted Allie on the dance floor and headed in her direction when a warm hand wrapped itself around my wrist. I stared in momentary confusion before recognition set in. Cowboy! He pulled me into his body and hugged me. Pretty lady, I was hoping I'd run into you tonight. I hated the way my body cringed at his touch. He wasn't the man my body craved, and the little bitch would accept no substitutes. I blew out a rough breath and ran a hand through my new chin-length hair. Here I am. What are you doing here? He shrugged. I had the night off, and I thought I'd drive down to see what was happening. I nodded. Well, it was good to see you. I'm having a girl's night, or I'd hang more. He looked disappointed, but smiled. I'll be sticking around tonight. Find me. I headed back to our empty table and sat down. The girls were all on the floor dancing, but I suddenly didn't feel like it. I felt more like crawling into bed and yanking the covers over my head. I'd been forcing everyone to party with me, trying to forget that I felt like there was a bottomless pit in my chest. But the tactic was losing its effectiveness. The system I'd been using since I was young had failed me. I hadn't been able to keep Wyatt at arm's length, and instead I'd fallen hard for the man. Everything about me had changed in a matter of days. Apparently the men in my life weren't any different, though because it had only taken Wyatt a couple of days to be finished with me. The thought gnawed at me until I couldn't sit still. I got up and headed towards the exit. I needed fresh air and a break from myself. Hey, you heading out? The cowboy caught me again, when I was a few steps away from the door. Just getting some air is all. I had hoped to slip out alone, but damned if he didn't follow me out. I stepped down from the porch and gazed up at the vibrant stars. You okay? I didn't look back at him. Yeah, just thinking about how pretty it is around here. You thinking of staying? I sighed while I pondered that. A part of me did want to stay. At least for a little while. I liked the women I'd met. I missed Allie when we didn't live nearby. But then there was Wyatt. I didn't know if I could run into him and not die a little each time. I don't know. He grabbed my hand and tugged me around to face him. He was too close. Come here. I pressed my hands against his chest and pushed away. No, I don't think that's a good idea. Sure it is. I was about to tell the guy in no uncertain terms to get lost when a vicious-sounding roar echoed from behind us. I looked back and saw the massive sun-streaked bear coming our way. The cowboy broke away from me and backed up. Run! I couldn't help but think that he had the right idea. Chapter 26 Wyatt I was going to kill the slimy asshole who touched my mate. I was going to rip his arms off and beat him to death with them. I charged towards him, happy he'd run. My bear loved a good chase. He'd tried to kiss Georgia, even though she'd been pushing him away. He was as good as dead. Georgia stepped into my path as I neared, and I almost ran her over. When I snarled down at her angrily for getting in my way... I watched her eyes become saucers before rolling to the back of her head. Her mouth fell open and she toppled backwards, flat on her back. Fuck. The woman fainted more than anyone I ever met. I shifted and scooped her into my arms. What am I going to do with you, sugar? You hurt her again and I'll skin you alive, Wyatt Drexel. Allie had come out and was glaring at me. She's good here, 
If you run her out of town, you'll have every woman in burden to answer to. I rolled my eyes. She's not going anywhere. Allie's face lit up. Good. Tell her that we gals voted her in as our official party planner. She can't leave. I didn't care much for their parties, and to hear Thorn tell it, he'd rather they didn't exist. I nodded to Allie, though, and turned to head home with my mate. I heard Thorn lecturing Allie before I made it out of range. You can't just stand there and talk to a naked man like that. You're mine. You're not supposed to look at other men. Allie laughed. Come down, you big old bear. Seeing and looking are two different things. Let's go inside and see if we can't find an empty bathroom. How's about that? I held Georgia tighter to my chest and hurried home. I had a lot to say to her, and I was betting that none of it was going to be easy. That was one thing I could bank on with my feisty little mate. Nothing about her was easy. Nothing would probably ever be easy. I made it to my house and towed open the door before kicking it shut, and then settling on my couch with Georgia held tightly in my arms. Wake up, sugar. We need to talk. She moaned against my bare shoulder, sending tingles of pleasure coursing through me. Wyatt. I held her tighter and cursed myself for being a giant fucking blockhead. I'd gone to Mom's house after leaving my group on the mountain, in the capable hands of Bill. Martha was still visiting Mom, and the two of them supported Thorne's argument, reiterating just how selfish I'd been. I knew I was wrong, and I couldn't imagine there being a worse thing to be wrong about. I'd hurt my mate. Wyatt? Georgia's voice was confused and weak as she lifted her head. Wyatt, where are we? I pressed my lips to her temple. My house? You fainted, so I brought you here. How do you feel? She groaned. Like I drank too much. Clearly way too much. This dream feels entirely too real. Sugar, you're not dreaming. I stroked her hair. I came to talk to you and saw that piece of shit trying to put his hands on you. I'm not finished with him yet either. She sat up a little and looked around. I tried to picture my place through her eyes. A wooden cabin, devoid of any knickknacks, sparsely furnished, with too many windows to ever really feel warm inside. Her eyes moved back to me, and then she scooted off my lap. Why did you bring me here? I instantly missed her body and had to fight to keep my hands to myself. I needed to talk to you. Her pouty lips turned down and she tugged at the hemline of her dress. I struggled to suppress the growl in my chest. It was too short for her to be wearing around town when I wasn't there. It hugged her curves and left my mouth watering. I wanted to rip it over her head and devour her whole. What do you want to talk about? First, how do you feel? You went out like a light. I didn't mean to scare you. Her cheeks brightened. I drank on an empty stomach. Haven't felt much like eating, I guess. And you shocked me. I wasn't expecting you to show up while I was still in town. Thorne told me you've been throwing parties. He's more than a little distraught. Allie told me to tell you that you were voted the official party planner, though. She seems excited. Lots of good that'll do me when I go back home. Look, I'm sorry you had to come to my rescue. Again. I'm fine, though. I'll go. I crossed my arms over my chest. You might want to listen to what I have to say first. She looked at me and then jerked her face away. Could you put some pants on? A shirt, too. I laughed. Things were lighter for me since I'd realized what a son of a bitch I'd been. Once I realized that I was the biggest problem here, there was nothing I wouldn't do to win her back. I don't plan on needing them for a while. 
What are you talking about? I stalked towards her. I was wrong. I was a dumb fuck for letting you go. I was a dumb fuck for making you stay. I tried to force you into my life, even if just for a couple of days, and I didn't stop to ask you what you wanted. I let myself think that because you didn't fit perfectly into my life, the way it was, that we didn't belong together. I was stupid and blind, too stupid to realize that I was the one who needed to compromise, and too blind to see how much you were trying. She met my eyes and absently reached up to tug at the shorter strands of her hair. She looked amazing. The shorter length revealed the smooth, delicate expanse of creamy neck. I'm sorry I didn't treat you the way you deserved, and I made you feel bad, and that makes me the biggest dumb fuck on the planet. I just saw my parents and how easy it was for them to live together. I thought it would have naturally been that easy between us. I never stopped to consider that it wasn't easy for them at first either. My mom corrected me, told me I was an asshole, which was probably the first time I'd ever heard her cuss. She told me that nothing had been easy for them at first. My dad was like me, more bear than man. He'd spent all his time hiding on the mountain. My mom liked the city. She spent her weekends in Dallas, going out with her girlfriends and exploring. The shy way that Georgia spoke next shot an arrow through my heart. How did they make it work? I stepped closer to her. My dad learned to wear clean shirts and shoes more than a day or two a week. My mom learned to love the wild in dad and with dad. They met in the middle. What if there isn't a middle for us? The question forced my hand. I threw caution out the window and scooped up my sad little mate. Chapter 27 Georgia Wyatt grabbed me and picked me up before carrying me back to his couch. He sat with me in his lap, straddling his thighs. I barely had time to blink before he covered my mouth with his and parted my lips with his tongue. It wasn't like his other kisses. This one held desperation. He used his lips and tongue to convince me that we could make it work. He put everything in that kiss, and I felt my heart melting. We're mates. There are no mistakes. You are mine. I will follow you wherever you go. I will move to the city with you if I have to. I will do whatever it takes. My throat squeezed as tears filled my eyes. It's not real. You don't know what you're talking about. The issues that I had been stuffing down finally came to the surface, and what spewed out wasn't pretty. I lied. I lied about having a dad around and giving people their weekends off because I wanted more time with him. The truth was I only ever saw him a handful of times in my entire life, each while he was leaving my mom's bedroom. He didn't care about me, didn't want me. The only reason I got the business was because somehow he died without a will. He'd never drawn one up and there was no other family. His lawyers made me do a paternity test because they hadn't realized he even had a kid. He didn't keep pictures of me on his desk or brag about me to his friends. He didn't love me. No man ever has. I'm unlovable. I ruin things and I'm too high maintenance. I spend too much time thinking and men leave. Even my mate didn't want me. You knew it. You wanted to run. If you really think about it, you'll still want to. There's something wrong with me, Wyatt. When I tried to get away from him, he tightened his hold and held me until I quit fighting him. It kills me to know you think that way about yourself, Georgia, and that I made it worse. I will spend my life convincing you that this is real, that I want to be with you, that I love you. I froze. What? He laughed and pulled my head down until it was on his shoulder. I said I love you. Because I do. I love you, Georgia. I think it started the moment I saw you. 
Then I realized it again when you were fussing at the bear like you'd lost your damned mind. My world narrowed to that moment, and I knew that if anything happened to you, I'd die too. You don't know me, Wyatt. Yes, I do. I know that you're kind. To other people, anyway. Funny, fierce, sexy as hell, and so fucking alive that everyone around you can't help but feel it. I'm fucking lucky to have you as my mate. Tears were falling faster now. My heart was daring to hope. But knowing how easily it could get crushed again made my palms sweaty and my lungs struggle for air. How can this work? You practically live on the mountain. I can't do that every week with you. I don't have that much hair to lose. Wyatt wiped my tears away. I'll shorten the trips. Only do longer ones on special occasions. Seeing the party you threw around the campfire gave me some ideas, too. Maybe you could come up for a night or two, if you wanted to. You liked the fishing. We could do that, and then you could put together something fun at night. I blinked at him. Something fun? He shrugged. Whatever you want. A party or whatever. Everyone loved having you there. The guys kept talking about how much they wished you were on every trip they made. I know you can't do that, and I won't ask you to. Maybe we can work something out, though. You're serious? Yes, Georgia, I am. You and me? It's happening. Forever. I shook my head. I have to go home for meetings sometimes. I have to. I have stuff there. I... I've never done anything like this. You're going to get tired of me. I'm no good at stuff like this. I stare too much and I get quiet and I get bitchy and I... I'm just not good. Do you like this dress? I looked down at it and shrugged. It's okay. Why? He grabbed the neck and effortlessly ripped the silky material down the middle of my chest. He ignored my scream of shock and tore it completely down the middle until it fell to my sides. You aren't supposed to wear little things like this when I'm not around to growl at every man who looks your way. I crossed my arms over my chest and felt a little bit of annoyance flare up. I do what I want. Also, it's not just men you have to worry about. While you were still up on that mountain, I decided I'm going to go for women from now on. Men are too much work. He growled. You're mine, Georgia. Didn't you hear me? I love you. No other men. No women. Only me. I gasped as he took my hips in his hands and pulled me harder into his body. I felt every inch of his hard erection pressing into me and bit back a moan. I wanted him. I wanted him more than I'd ever wanted anything, and in a different way than I was used to. Long-term relationship kind of want. What if it doesn't work? His eyes softened. It will. I will do anything for you. He buried his face in the crook of my neck and shoulder and inhaled deeply. You don't have to be scared, Georgia. This is it. You have a man in your life who is going to fight for you, who will not let another second go by without you knowing how much he loves you, who will help you see that you were the best damn thing that's ever happened to him. This is going to work, I swear to you. My heart felt like it was going to explode in my chest. There was hardly enough room in there for the emotions that Wyatt was stirring in me. Forever. Forever with the man in front of me. I looked at him, had the raw desire in his eyes that obliterated the fear and self-loathing that had been threatening to strangle me over the past few days. Yes. I want this. His grin was wicked. It was never a question, sugar. I'm not letting you go. Chapter 28 Wyatt I pulled George's face down to mine and held her there, a breath away from the kiss that I needed. I'll spend my life making sure you forget every worry you ever had that I could leave you. 
Her eyes fluttered shut and a soft sigh fell from her lips. We can live here. I leaned back and watched her. She was stunning. I ran my fingers through her hair and rubbed the ends between my fingers. I like it like this. It's sexy. She pressed her cheek into my hand and gave me a soft smile. I'll have to go back every so often for a few days at a time to sign off on things. I like it here, though. We'll have to go back. You're stuck with me from now on. Okay. I quirked an eyebrow. Okay. She nodded. Yeah. Just... Be easy with me, okay? If you do get sick of me, just give me some warning. I stood up, wrapping her legs around my waist as I did. I carried her into my bedroom and placed her gently down on the bed. One day, you'll see that you're stuck with me for good. I don't deserve you, but I'm not questioning it anymore. I'm just going to take. Her hair fanned out around her, and I hovered over to rub my face against it. Her hands held my sides, her fingertips pressing into my skin harder as I brushed my lips over her ear. You smell like the berries from the mountain. Fresh, wild, and a little dangerous. You taste that way, too. One kiss and I have a boner as hard as a rock. You do that to me. She reached higher and wrapped her hands around my neck. Her back arched and her chest rubbed against mine. Keep talking to me. I feel like I'm going to go up in flames. I want to spend the rest of my life waking up next to you. Waking up in the middle of the night, in the morning, from naps, here, there, wherever. I pressed my weight into her and trailed my hand from her throat down to her hip. I'm going to make sure that there isn't a day that goes by that you don't know what I feel for you. She moaned when I pressed into her harder. Even when I'm old and wrinkled? I dipped my head and ran my tongue over my mark on her shoulder. When she shivered under me, I slipped my hand between our bodies and down the front of her lacy panties and slid a finger into her soft, wet folds. Even when you're old and wrinkled. Even when you stare at me too long and I start to wonder if there's something on my face. Even when you're a little bitchy. Even if you burn the rest of your hair off. Her laugh turned into a moan as I used the heel of my palm to rub against her clit as I worked my finger in and out of her core. She pressed her head back into the pillow and tried to widen her legs. Quiet. More. I nipped her collarbone and then lowered my mouth until I could take one of her nipples into my mouth. I sucked hard sliding another finger into her, stretching her and readying her body for me. George's fingernails bit into my back as she gasped. Her body tightened around my fingers, and she lifted her thighs to wrap them around me. I want you in me. I want you, Wyatt, always. I bit her nipple and then soothed it with my tongue before moving to her mouth. I'd been a fool but I wanted her forever. I loved her. I'm so close. Her lips parted, and her eyes squeezed shut as I shifted my fingers slightly. She clamped down around my fingers as her pussy started to pulsate. Her nails dragged down my back, and then she clamped her teeth closed on my neck. I gritted my teeth and quickly ripped her panties off. When I sunk into her, her teeth scraped down my skin, and then she was gasping for air. I love you too, she whispered in my ear. My chest threatened to split in two. My heart was beating so fast. Hearing her say that she loved me was the single most powerful moment of my life. I want forever. I want you. This. Forever. Her voice was broken as her body continued to convulse under me. I stopped moving, desperate to last longer. Hearing her say those things to me put me way too close to the precipice. 
You're going to make me embarrass myself. Fuck, Georgia. She opened her eyes and met mine in a fierce stare that took my breath. I want to feel you come. I want you to feel as good as you make me feel. I was gone as soon as she said those words. But then she tightened around me and it was over. I thrust into her a few more times and then I came hard, buried my face in her neck and breathed in her scent as I tried to recover. Forever. I rolled onto my side, taking her body with me so she curled against my chest. Nothing less. Her arms still held me as she slowly stroked my back, as she pressed sweet kisses into my chest. I was miserable at the idea of leaving. Me too, sugar. Letting you walk away was the hardest and dumbest thing I've ever done. I don't plan on making that mistake again. She smiled into my skin. I'm going to make some kind of women's club. I furrowed my brow. Huh? I heard all about your little boys club. You and the guy sit at the same table, and you talk a guy talk and do things together, and you're tight. The women don't have that. We're going to, though. We're going to have our own table, and we're going to rule that bar. I sighed like it was a hassle. But secretly, I was more than enjoying the idea. Georgia was not only staying, but she was putting her mark on the place. I'm sure Thorne will love that plan. I'll go up the mountain with you some, too. Not too much. I'm really bad at it. I did like the fishing, though, and the party. I had fun making everyone happy. She blinked up at me. When I come, can we have a real tent? I groaned. Sugar, I lead a survival tour. If I'm the only one in a tent, I'm going to look like a puss... Wyatt. Sure, we can sleep in a real tent when you're there. She grinned and I felt my world move. Thank you. I would do anything to keep that smile on her face. Even if it meant being wrapped around her finger and sleeping in a tent that smelled like plastic. Anything to make sure she knew that she was lovable and loved. Forever. The End This has been Wyatt, Bears of Burden, Book Two. Written by Candace Ayers. Narrated by R.J. Crichton. Copyright 2018 by Lovestruck Romance. Production Copyright 2018 by Candace Ayers.